your YouTube channel, please uh, search Jiaheng Chemistry. Okay, so uh, just started. Okay, but I don't really want to care about the YouTube. Uh, just just to play it again. Okay? So, guys, are you guys done with this? Writing all this stuff, huh? Because as I said, this is a very, very low chance to come out in SPM. But as I said, just in case, if this doesn't really come out, uh, at least you have some memory about all this, like silicon carbide, tungsten carbide, and stuff, okay? So, make sure you guys know about this. So, moving on, after ceramics, you can see here, from here, we have your industry substance A and B to make bricks and potteries, to make breaking this and cutting this. So, definitely from here, from the top question, we can see that actually to make brick and pottery, uh, you don't need very good, very advanced ceramic. You just need to have the normal traditional ceramic. Ah, okay. I watch YouTube can. Uh. Why you want to watch a YouTube? Here cannot, man. You want to go out also, man? You want to watch YouTube also cannot. Uh. Ah, but I'm not going to stop you. Uh. Just that YouTube will a little bit delay. Suji at there also. Hello. <laughs> We at VIP in Zoom. Yeah, la. Zoom is VIP. Uh, YouTube, that one, uh, they watch for fun. No, la. Yeah, just to help them, okay? For free. Mithilish there also. Hey, you all, really? Okay. So, uh, so for A, to make bricks and potteries, you just need a traditional uh, ceramic. For breaking these, these are all like high melting point. Like you use uh, like advanced technology stuff. You're going to need advanced ceramic. So of course the name the main component is the same lah. They are ceramic ma. So name the, the main component is still clay, or we can call it a kaolin. Okay. So uh, from here, if you move on, okay, we actually have two basic properties of A. So A is your traditional uh, traditional ceramic, then B is your advanced ceramic. So two basic properties. You can talk about like uh, hard but brittle for traditional ceramic. Then for advanced ceramic, you can say it's like hard and strong, okay. Uh, resistant to heat and stuff. So you can see from here, these are all the stuff you can get from here. Okay, it breaks easily, chemically inert. Okay, chemically inert is also quite important because ceramic can be your flower pot, can be your car engines and stuff. Okay. Okay, seeing some, hey, Hang Yu at YouTube. Not bad. Hello, hello. <laughs> seeing some long lost students. Uh, got people of, Edwards also there. Jay, uh, this J looks like Jasmine. Hi, if it's Jasmine, hi. <laughs> okay, so of course, moving on. So you can go back, go back up a little bit. Okay, can. Oh, Zoe Natasha is also at YouTube. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But hopefully this half of this class can help them a little bit. Lah. Okay, guys, all done. Huh? Okay, so now, since we know that A, it's your uh, traditional ceramic, B will be your uh, advanced ceramic. So in this case here, let's put on some differences there. So the first difference from here, you can see A, the name of them. Lah. Okay, traditional ceramic, advanced ceramic. Okay, then of course we have some uh, properties inside it, some chemicals inside it. So A usually just kaolin, just clay, but B we B, beside clay we add on some other additive. We add on oxide, carbides, and nitrites. So from here, so we actually have this thing here. So these two are the components of them. Then of course going down, we actually have what we know that uh, traditional ceramic is actually much more weaker, maybe it's actually brittle, uh, then it actually have lower heat resistance and stuff. So we can see that low heat resistance compared to B and then higher heat resistance compared to A. Okay, and then move on. Okay, we actually have two uh, heat resistance really, then we can talk about the uh, chemically inert. So it should be less chemically inert, this one should be more chemically inert. So we can talk about like, uh, when you pour acid on it, what happened to it, okay? And lastly, about your advanced ceramic, you know that it's actually good for what? Good for your 
make superconductor. So you can say that A is actually no superconductivity properties, and then advanced ceramic has superconductivity uh, properties. So as I say again, superconductivity means that it can actually able to produce uh, a strong electromagnetic by having a very low temperature. Okay, so that's one, one thing from here. Okay, so that's A and B. So give me another usage of A. So besides having making bricks, making potteries, any other stuff that your ceramic can turn into. Uh, think about what can you use ceramic to make? So there's a lot of answers. Lah. Okay, you can talk about floor tiles, also can. So if you use ceramic to make floor tiles. Uh, you can talk about your cooking ware, okay, your pots and stuff, your cooking pans, making pots, yes, can. So tiles, cookware. Okay, so I believe it's all good from here. Okay, then moving on, another question of glass and ceramic. Okay, just now was ceramic, right? Now you're gonna do glass, huh? Okay, so we are actually having, oh wait, sorry, sorry. Okay, done. Okay, moving on. Huh? So when we talk about glass, uh, guys, do you remember what are all the type of glass we have? So in total, we should have four types of glass. What's the most basic glass we have in our syllabus? Ah, soda lime, fused glass. Ah, correct, got fused glass, got soda lime glass, very good. So the most basic one should be the fused glass. And then we have soda lime. What's the next two? Lead crystal glass, correct. What, what's the last one? Borosilicate, very good, yes, okay. So can you name X and Y? Ah, okay, so X is what? X is the one that we use in your laboratory glassware. So usually to make laboratory glassware, uh, you want it to be some special properties, such as what? Uh, someone say soda line, someone say borosilicate. Uh, I would say the more accurate one should be borosilicate, okay? Why? Because when you talk about science lab apparatus, it, sometimes you have to heat it, you have to actually uh, cool it and stuff, right? So glass that are usually having higher resistance to temperature change should be your borosilicate glass. Uh, because like boiling tube, uh, sometimes you do an experiment, uh, you heat it and then you straight away cool it into ice. So actually a normal glass, like fused glass, like solar lime glass, they can't actually withstand this temperature change. They cannot change from very high temperature suddenly, suddenly straight to low, very low temperature. It will actually crack uh, normal glass like solar lime and your fused glass. So the only one of the glass that is actually so strong, they can withstand sudden change of temperature. Okay, just like your IKEA bottle, I know, right? Ah, talking about the IKEA bottle make me sad. Ah, okay, so usually like soda lime glass, okay, the IKEA bottle that I usually usually use last time, ah, very cheap lah, but then cannot withstand high temperature, high high range of temperature change, lor. Ah, hot water, cold water, crack. Ah, now you see what I'm using? I use metal cup. Oh. <laughs> okay, so definitely from here, X should be your borosilicate. Okay, but what's Y to make telescope? This one you learn in digit. <laughs> okay, so yes, to actually, this one you actually use concave lens, right? Uh, so to actually make lens, uh, no need very good glass one, okay? Just the basic, the most basic glass we have, which is a fused glass. Okay, so we can call it a fused silica glass, or just call it a fused glass will do, doesn't really matter. So borosilicate glass, fused uh, silica glass, and state the composition of Z. So Z is your light bulb. What glass do you use first? What glass you are using actually for here, for this light bulb? So now we learned about borosilicate no more edema, fused glass no more edema. Ah, so this guy here, okay. Uh, lead crystal, no. Ah, okay, what's the properties of lead crystal and solar line? That's the last two, we, have, we haven't talked about it, right? So lead crystal glass is actually a glass that have high refractive index. So usually you use it to, to actually for places to actually have more refraction of light. For example, this, ah, okay, the hanging lights, all this, ah, you, need, you need the light to be refracted to all direction, to look very nice in the hotel and stuff. So W should be your lead crystal glass, okay? But the light bulb, ah, light bulb leh, should be the one that is easily shaped. Okay, so it's soda line. 
but they are not asking you the type of glass. What is the composition? So what is inside soda lime to make him easily shape into like round shape, into a different different shape? Okay? So what's the composition? What's, what's inside soda lime? Uh, I told you here this is soda lime, Dima, but you all don't know what's inside soda lime. <laughs> Okay, so actually soda lime, it's uh, having the most basic glass. Uh. Soda and lime. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Soda lime glass or soda and lime. Uh. Sure. <laughs> okay, so the first thing is soda lime glass must have glass. Ma. Glass is made of what? Glass is made of sand. And sand chemistry, we call it silicon dioxide. Okay, so number one, silicon dioxide must have a lot. Okay, number two, got sodium carbonate. Yes, very good. Wow, not bad, Keshav. Go one more. Uh, sodium carbonate and one more carbonate. Uh, what carbonate? Leh? Uh, so for here, I give you it's calcium carbonate. So by having sodium carbonate and calcium carbonate, you form sort of lime glass that can be easily shaped into different stuff. Uh, I mean like different shape. Uh, you see our light bulb got long, got short, got round, got curled, got, got circular shape, stuff. Okay. Calcium, pipe too slow. Oh, Keshav. Nice excuse. <laughs> okay, so if you move on, okay, you have two special properties of glass W. Ah, so W is, as I said, the hotel hang lights, okay, the chandelier. So of course, what is the two special properties? So number one, it should be the one that I said just now, high refractive index. And then another one is typically, you know that chandelier is usually very heavy, right? So it's actually the heaviest glass among these four. So it's actually high density, high refractive index. Okay, so I hope all this can bring back a memory. Uh, because when you do revision, uh, you all will do revision for this or not. Uh, glass, you always forget. Right? Like ceramic glass, uh, all these students always tend to forget to do revision. Of course, moving on. Okay, we have your type of glass. Okay, transparent to light and infrared. High melting point, low coefficient of thermal expansion, resistant to chemical corrosion. So guys, what is this? The moment you see this low coefficient of thermal expansion, what is low coefficient? Uh, low coefficient means that you heat it, you cool it, it doesn't expand a lot. It doesn't contract a lot. Ah, So basically, this is the one that is suitable to make what? Your laboratory apparatus. Ah, because you heat, never expand that much. You cool it, never contract that much. So when he don't expand too much, he don't contract too much, it doesn't crack that easily. So this is called the borosilicate glass. Okay, so give one other example of the uses of glass. Ah, so beside, uh, beside having, or they say beside the uses of, means beside doing your laboratory glassware, we can also use it at where? Usually for your uh, glass that we use in related to heat. So maybe your cookware, your cooking hardware. Ah, okay. So my answer here should be cooking hardware or laboratory glassware. Right? But they say stated in B1. Uh, other example. Or we just cook, cookware is better. Lah. Okay, so definitely moving on. Okay, going down. Okay, we have this. It looks like a bridge. Oh, yes, it's a bridge. Okay. Name the construction material use. Ah, so we are moving on after glass, which is your composite materials. So if you look at this bridge, ah, what does it look like? If you look at here, if you zoom into it, maybe your book very ugly. Ah, so yeah. Okay, you look at mine. So it has a lot of uh uh tiangs and stuff, okay, all this stuff here. You see, huh? So in your composite material that you learn. Okay, what materials do we use to build a bridge? Do you remember what are the composite materials we have in your syllabus? Uh, if you remember, got what? Got photochromic glass, got optic fiber, got reinforced concrete, cement. Ah, uh, no, no, cement is just one of the uh, materials in reinforced concrete. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, composite materials. So of of course, definitely to make a bridge, I can't use optic fiber here, ma. Okay, uh. What photochromic glass impossible, right? So one of the one that we always learn is called the reinforced concrete. But do you guys remember what is reinforced concrete? What do you add? What do you mix? Because composite material means you mix stuff together, ma. With steel bar, what with steel bar? 
Ah, cement with steel bar, concrete with steel bar. Yes, okay, cement and steel. Yes, correct. So definitely from here, ice, you actually make them together. Why cement and steel bar? So if you talk about cement first, cement is actually when he dry, uh, he becomes strong and hard, but one thing is it is, it is brittle, meaning, meaning it cracks easily. So to prevent it from cracking, we need something that can have high tensile strength. Means can something that can hold them together. So which is a steel. Steel is a metal where metal is actually having high tensile strength. Ah, so of course, right here, the answer here is reinforced concrete. And how you prevent the bridge from collapsing, uh, collapsing easily? So you can see the tensile strength. See my, my keyword is here, tensile strength in the concrete increases when they're reinforced with steel. Okay, it makes the bridge stronger and prevents it from collapsing easily. Okay, so moving on, going down, do it. I let you all write first. Okay, 30 seconds. Hey, can I move it down? Huh? Anyone not done yet? Can I move on? Hey, all correct, all done. Okay, now, so moving on, we are still on this topic, which is the composite materials and stuff. Okay, so it might be some mixture of the chapter here. So we have cooking pot PQRS. Okay, looks like your physics, right? <laughs> okay, so we have silicon dioxide, boron oxide, sodium oxide, aluminum oxide. And then hydrated aluminum silicate. Basically, this is clay. Alumina silicate is clay. Huh? Okay, you use clay to make like ceramic, so ceramic pots. Okay. So you have iron with chromium with nickel, clay pot chicken rice. Ah, Keshav, just done lunch, then you are craving for other stuff again. Huh? <laughs> okay, and last one is iron. Okay. So state two similar properties of P and Q. Ah, so what's P? If you see P, uh, it's a see-through pot. It's a glass, technically. Ah, so a glass. And then Q, it's clay, ceramic. Ah, so give me two similar property. So glass and ceramic, what are the same feeling? Uh, if I take P, I hit you, you feel pain. Uh? Ah, <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. Uh. So what? Hot but brittle? Ah, very good. All right, if you get concussion, way okay. So yes, hard but brittle is one of your answer there. Okay, hard but brittle, and then uh, high resistance to heat. Mm, also can high resistance to heat also can. Uh, so there's a lot of answers lah. They are same resistance to heat, resistance to uh, chemicals. Okay, resistance to corrosion. It doesn't corrode. Okay, and then it's hard. Okay, so there's a lot of answers here. I just want two. So hard and resistance to corrosion. Okay. <laughs> Joe, I so go shit. Okay, go, 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 go. <laughs> uh, all, all having lunch already, uh, got all very good digestive system. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Give two advantages and this one disadvantage of PQ compared to RS. Okay, so the two advantages of PQ. Uh, what do we know about PQ? So when we talk about them, it's uh, resistant to corrosion, uh, resistant to heat, okay, chemically inert, basically the glass and ceramic properties. Lah. Then what is the disadvantage compared to R and S? So R is iron, chromium, nickel, uh, which is still as steel. Then for S is just iron. So these two are basically metal. Mah. So metal got what benefit compared to P and Q? Ah, just now you all told me, ma, it's hard. P and Q is hard. R and S is not as hard. But the same thing, at the same time, they have their own benefit and disadvantage. So PQ is one. PQ is hard, but brittle means you drop it, ah, you're going to crack it. Okay, you're going to actually uh, get into pieces. R and S is not hard. It's not as hard as P and Q. But when you drop it, it will just dent. So it won't crack. What is this? Ah, so we call this the, uh, we call it that we cannot we call them duck towel, okay, malleable. But of course, lah, we're gonna talk about the disadvantage of PQ. Lah. So what do we call them? The word brittle. Brittle means you drop it easily crack. 
Okay, so definitely from here. Advantage, chemically inert, non-corrosive, resistant to heat. Okay, then uh, disadvantage, brittle. Okay, so when you go on with that, you have to draw the arrangement for atoms in R and S. So what is R? R is actually alloy because it's stainless steel. Uh. S is actually pure metal. Can you draw alloy and pure metal? Ah, so what do you think about alloy first? What's the definition for alloy? Alloy means what? It's a mixture of two or more types of metal combined together, but they have different what? Different atomic size. Ah, so different size, some big, some small. Okay. Then pure metal is just a normal solid arrangement. Ah. Okay. So I hope you guys still remember from here. So guys, are you ready? Can draw? Ah, ah look at my drawing. Very nice one. Huyo. <laughs> Huyo. <laughs> Ah yeah, okay, you all draw la, huh? you all draw ma. You go, you all go SPM ma, not me la, huh? So for pot R, you're gonna actually draw out your different size uh, atoms. Okay, so need label. Uh, need even though they say draw only ma, but usually they will say draw and label. So even they never say label uh, please label la, uh, because sometimes your teachers find all ways to to get to minus your marks. Okay, don't give them the chance. GG, if I forget the size, uh, if you forget the size, uh, uh, then you don't label. Lah. Uh, but then if you die, die one, you label, uh, like say draw and label, then you have to you have to give it a try. Lah, because I don't want you to memorize the size, uh, a bit unnecessary. Uh. Okay, just go and go ahead and try, okay, like carbon, nickel, and stuff. Okay. How to remember which one is more? Usually the smaller size one is more. Okay, the big size one is lesser. Uh, so usually to draw a lawyer, draw two big circles first, then you fill it up the side with small circles. Ah, uh, then that's a, that's a lawyer. Okay, that's a trick to draw. Then for pure metal, just all same size. Okay, arrange orderly in manner. Okay, so done with the arrangement. Okay, now we're gonna go. Oh, go draw finish in it. <laughs> so yeah, sorry that I draw too fast. Sure. <laughs> okay, ma, I see my drawing so nice. Impressed by my own drawing. <laughs> okay, we should apologize because you all draw so slow. Sure. <laughs> okay, so then uh, going down, which is it's the same topic, but it's under a little bit of alloy here. So why pot R is more durable, okay, compared to pot S? Ah, uh, so more durable means like it's harder, it's stronger. So we all know alloy is the better version of your normal metal, okay? But why? Why alloy is better? Why alloy is stronger? So it's all about the arrangement. So alloy, because they have different size. Or is it still orderly arrangement? No more. So the different size chromium, the different size atoms, when you slot into it, they mess up. So what do you call this? We call this the disrupt arrangement. Okay, the arrangement got disrupted and then we are not orderly and arranged anymore. You apply force, it will be harder for them to slide over each other. So that's for your pot R. Pot S easily bend, easily dent because the atoms are layer by layer. They can easily slide if you apply force. Okay, so from here, this is something that we discussed just now. So now let's try with this. Uh, so pot R is more durable because pot R is stronger. Okay. Why? So number one, pot R is made of alloy that consists different type of atoms, but it's not enough. You have to say there's different type of atoms have different size. And this different size will disrupt the orderly arrangement of pure metal. So when force applied layer of atoms do not slide over one another easily. So this is for alloy. Ah, so I hope you guys also still remember alloy. Eh? Alloy from Genshin. Wait. Hey, Zoe. Don't Genshin first. Wait. Finish SPM first. Don't Genshin, Genshin, all these things. Eh? Hiya. Yes, alloy from Genshin. Ah, these two are. 
Okay, so name one other alloy. <laughs> name other alloy. Yeah. We, its main component is material S. So what's material S? It's iron. So guys, ah, that's your bit. What alloy it's basically having iron as main component? And state its composition. Means you give me the name idea, the alloy, the name of alloy. And then you also have to give me what is inside the alloy. Ah, I guarantee you, I think 80% here cannot do. Because you all always don't want to memorize what is inside all the alloy stuff. <laughs> okay, so uh, because at here, uh, it's actually stainless steel. Ma. Okay, this is actually stainless steel. So now I want another alloy that is also having iron. So actually only got two. What is stainless steel? What is steel? Ah, wow, Suji, remember eh? Ah, Suji, you remember then? Tell me what is inside steel? Forgot. Hey, copper. Ah, no, no, no. Carbon and iron. Who is say? Don't play, play. Really, got people can answer one. Eh? Who is say? Okay, Suji, how to go escape? How to go escape? Legit, ah, legit. Guys, those who answer me carbon and iron, yes, that's your answer. Oi, Zoe, you very good in pick up answer. Ah? <laughs> okay, so uh, what you can say, you can say it's steel. Okay, ah, uh, Temba Queen right here. <laughs> Are you really free, feeling proud about that? Ah, yeah. So of course, what other composition inside? Okay, since you all say it's iron and carbon, ma. But do you remember the percentage? <laughs> ah, see, Temba, Temba, Samo, Temba, Samo. Ah, yeah, one and ninety nine. You are almost there. Ah, so actually, it's around there. Lah. So composition is actually 98% iron and then 2% carbon. Ah, yee, so close. That's why when you all say, I, ah, yes, the note say, I think I got, okay, because there are two types, okay, uh, 99 and 1% also got. Uh, the 1% difference uh, don't really affect a lot. Lah. Okay. High carbon steel and stuff. Yang Jie Mathematics, Xing Yi is here, Wei En is here. <laughs> Funny all these people. Go enjoy my life. Okay, so good guessing, good guessing power. Okay, but the 1 and 99, okay lah, don't worry about that. Okay, 98, 2 and 98, 1 and 99 should be fine. Okay, moving on. Huh? Okay, next one. We have your photochromic glass. Okay, your substance Y, advanced ceramic. Okay, so substance X is the main component to make photochromic glass. What is X? Ah, uh, guys, do you remember what's photochromic glass? Photochromic glass is what? Ah, uh, the uncle, uncle always have these glasses on. Ah, uh, like my father, like we also have that. Having this uncle <laughs> photochromic glass. What is that? It's basically the glass that can actually change into dark colors when exposed to UV light. Kinda. So, what is X? X is the one that can actually change color. Okay, so from here, okay, we have silver chloride. Okay, silver chloride is the one that change color. Ah, copper two chloride is also the one that change color. But the main component to make Photochromic glass. Oh, okay. They are not asking the one that changed color. Technically, the one that changed color, they give you already. So what is X? It's a photochromic glass. Correct. Silicon dioxide. <laughs> I also almost got tricked by that. Ah, yeah. Hey, it's a glass. What is the main component to make a glass? Sand. Ah, silicon dioxide. Okay, so give one properties of photochromic glass. As we said just now, it gets dark when exposed to sunlight, to UV ray. Okay? So, darkens when exposed to ultraviolet light or sunlight. <laughs> glass la, who is it? Is it? When answering my question, eh? when can go SDM and eh? you all cannot go SDM. 
power. Okay, so he, he can stop us. Can, sure. <laughs> okay, so why is something that is harder than pure iron? Okay, got iron, got carbon, guys. The moment you see carbon, uh, definitely it's either your steel or stainless steel. Okay, so it's harder and explain why. So definitely from here, it's again, it's alloy. Ah, okay. So the alloy again comes again here. So what do we know about that? Alloy have different size atoms that disrupts the orderly arrangement. And then when force is applied, atoms, layer of atoms is harder to slide over each other. Okay, so it's the same answer here, guys. Oh, I hope you guys can write this out yourself again. Huh? Okay, then after the alloy, okay, we have some pictures here, some drawings here. Okay, when you apply force to metal X, apply force to ceramic Y. Okay, so when you apply force to metal, they just slide. But if you apply force to ceramic, they don't slide, they split, they crack. Ah, so explain the difference of ductility between uh, metal X and ceramic Y. So what's ductility, guys? What's ductile? What's the definition of a ductile? Then got learn, learn in physics. Ah, uh, sure. uh, but definitely ductile and malleable are almost the same uh, meaning. But ductile is more on what? It's more on bending, it's more on pulling. Means if you actually have a piece of metal, you if you actually pull it with a strong force, it can become a, a long metal, but a thinner metal. Uh, that's how we actually make your, your phone charger cable. Okay, so that's what about metal? Okay, for why ceramic Y, can you pull a ceramic and ceramic change the shape, change the shape, change the size? Cannot ma. Uh -huh. So from here, you can see X is ductile, but Y is brittle. Okay, so particles in ceramic are strongly bonded in indefinite arrangement. They cannot slide over when the force is applied. Ah, uh, ceramic cannot fall, cannot slide on a metal only can slide. Okay. Yi Qing is here also. Oh, Yi Qing, ah. <laughs> okay, so moving on. We have some optic fibers. Okay, you all know your Unify, okay, your, your Maxis fiber and a copper wires. Okay, so this one you also got learned in physics, ma. Ah, you all just done physics exam. I hope you guys still remember, la. So what's the advantage of using optic fiber? You know optic fiber made of glass and plastic, ma. So instead of copper wires in high definition uh, cable TV network, so why do we, last time we used copper, uh, now we use optic fiber. Ah, so how optic fiber transfer your data? Throw physics away already. Wait, cannot, cannot. Still got a bit, still got a bit. Still need to use a bit physics. Okay. The how, how optic fiber transfer data? Ah, so if you all learn in physics, you have what? You have your high and low refractive index, and then you have your total internal reflection. You actually use light to transfer your data. Got it? Ah, then for copper wire, because it's just a metal, they transfer by electrons. So it's not that efficient, not that accurate. And it's not that good actually. So from here, two marks, optic fiber use, light that can send information faster than copper wires, has greater bandwidth compared to copper wire. Okay, this bandwidth thingy is a bit too much of physics. Huh? So you just try to put more words you can try to think about. Physics knowledge gone. Wei En is here. <laughs> you all say physics knowledge gone. Wei En can hear you all. <laughs> because I read out your comments. Okay. So moving on. Okay. We have this thing, which is some drawings here. Okay. So draw the, not like you don't know. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's that's so honest of me. Okay. So draw the structural formula for the monomer. So this is actually a compound Z and you want to convert it into a monomer. So guys, what do you exactly call this? Ah, you have many repeating monomer connect together. We call this the polymer. Ah, okay. So, and you want to draw this into back into monomer means you have to find the repeating part. So which parts are we actually repeating? If you check your whole diagram, if you see CH2, the first one, second one CCL on top, H at the bottom, third one again CH2, 
for one C, C, L on the top, H at the bottom. So what is the part that's repeating? It's actually having the first and second carbon. They are actually repeating in this way. Kind of. So to convert this back into more normal, what do you have to do? You actually have to actually go for that. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Zoom UTN class maximum capacity. Sorry, yeah. Let me do some setting for you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Utian using the H eight. Okay, so okay, I'm back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Don't reach really my physics better than chemistry. Wow, please, Zoe. Okay, so moving on, us, yeah. So draw the structural formula of the monomer of compound Z. So from back to here is you can see that you want to convert this part into monomer. So what's monomer? I say so polymer is you open up your arms, you connect, you hold your hands with other compounds, okay, with other monomers. But if you want to turn it back to monomer, you have to close back your arms. So what is happening to the middle? So it, it was bonding to the left, bonding to the right. Now you close up your arms. It is still C2, it's still H, still CL, still H, all everything the same, except in the middle, you have a double bond. Okay, in the middle, you will have a double bond. And that's all. Ah, okay. Then compound Z. Wait, uh, let me let me check Utens class. Huh? Okay, so from here, compound Z is often used in making water pipe. State what advantage of this type of pipe as compared to metal pipes. Ah, so Z is what? Guys, do you guys remember what is this? A polymer with CL. Any idea? <laughs> what is the composite material, the polymer that comes to your mind that contains C? Ah, correct. In short words, we call them PVC, okay? <laughs> okay, so that's why usually we use PVC to make pipes, PVC pipes, right now. Okay, so PVC pipe is having what benefit? Metal pipe is what? Metal pipe, metal, ma. metal easily rust. Ah, so for here, okay, what happened is it should be does not corrode uh, or rust. So this is a slash. Does not corrode, does not rust. Someone answered polyvinyl chloride. Oh, not bad. Ah, see, hey, eh, YouTube comment, copy for answer. Eh. You all cannot answer me. Eh. Lose really, lose really. Okay, polyethylene, chloroethane. Okay, see ya. So, teacher, do they use PVC in underground pipe? Of course, yes. But usually they will pair with some other protection first. Because PVC, it's good because it does not rust. But usually they will pair with other, like cement piping and stuff, some harder pipe outside than PVC pipe inside. Okay, all right. Let me check Newton's class. Okay, okay. I open up for him already. Okay, so now we are going down into a car. Ah, guys, physics, physics. Okay, you thought you can throw away physics, but no, we are back to physics again. Yee, physics. <laughs> wait, wait, you see, everyone. I... <laughs> yes, physics again. Oh, Xianqi. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, problem number one. Yeah, Yati feels hot. Same to me. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, and dazzle in afternoon due to the sunlight. Okay, so 
Problem number two, brake of the car is not efficient. Problem number three, body of a car easily dented. Ah, what is the best way to solve this? Buy a new car. <laughs> no lah, just kidding. <laughs> what kind of car is this? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of problem. Or hi, yeah. Okay lah. So old then throw away. <laughs> no leh, maybe I draw this one. Ah, this one, this one. Ah, this ah, like this different. Who yo? B N W. Okay, okay. No lah, come here. Okay. So now give four manufactured substances. Okay. In the industry, so that you can actually uh, so, uh, solve yati problems uh, with justification, and it's 10 marks here. Ah, so you have three problems here. You must solve all three, only can get 10 marks. Ma. Okay, so in this case, if she feel hot due to the sunlight, what can you do? Now she's sitting in the car, ma. she feel very hot, oh, but turn on the aircon. <laughs> Ah yeah, correct guys. Use the, the knowledge in your composite materials, right? So what we learn is your photochromic glass. Okay, but then a for a car, it's actually not very not very, I would say financial okay with this. Uh, okay, because to change your car to photochromic glass is quite expensive. Okay, so usually in our car we just have a normal glass and then put the car tinting okay it's okay common sense doesn't make matter here <laughs> i understand that okay so number one yes you can change your glass into for autochromic glass so when sunlight exposed to it it actually turns dark okay then she don't feel that hot yeah then for problem number two we actually have the brake of the car is not efficient so what do you do change the brake lock ah you change the brake this to what to what this uh, we learned one, one of the topics we learned to make uh, the disc brake, right? So we call it the silicon carbide regular, your advanced ceramic. Okay. Then problem number two solve. Problem three, body of the car easily dented. Don't buy car. La. Car memang can dent one. Ah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I know, right? You see, car actually, they are meant to be easily dented to absorb impact. Or not. You see, momentum. Ah, okay. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah, la, yeah, la, correct. La. Ah, so <laughs> just right, man of steel, then. Hey, hey, hey. No, la, okay. These are a bit not making sense, la, as, I, as you said just now. Common sense doesn't really matter here. La. Geo physics is over. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So, what you're going to do? You're going to actually try to solve this problem. Because even though we know logically the body of car, then is not a problem, okay? it's actually a benefit. But now, since Yati said it's a problem, then we solve for her. Ah, okay. This is like being a Karen. Eh? Being a Karen complaining everything about her car. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. So, since we say that it's easily dented, so guys, what do we do? What do we do? Ah, use alloy, correct. Okay. So, what alloy do we use? So, usually our car is made of iron. Okay. So, we can use like steel. Uh, Stainless steel a bit extra, lah, okay? Steel should be fine, okay? So, 10 marks. Are you guys ready? Can I? So, number one is to change your glass, okay, into photochromic glass, okay? So, stainless steel so car looks shiny. <laughs> stainless steel no need to paint the car already, is it? Stainless steel sector. No need, no, no need, no paint needed. No, lah, actually, stainless steel quite, quite boring. Uh, okay, so Yapi changed the car window to photochromic glass. So when photochromic glass is a composite material made of glass, silver chloride, and copper one chloride, able to protect the user from UV light. Okay, three marks from here. Okay, then the car brake is not efficient. Ah, uh, then don't drive so fast lah. Brake slow lah. Hi, uh... <laughs> sorry, sorry for being another Karen here. Hey, sorry, sorry. Okay, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna actually use your uh, advanced ceramic. Okay, so advanced ceramic, use ABS system. <laughs> uh, why not just order grab, don't drive? <laughs> true, true. Okay, okay. so uh, from here, we're going to actually use your, uh, change your uh, brake plate, okay, which is made of advanced ceramic. Uh, you can call it a silicon carbide. So one of the advanced ceramic components is called silicon carbide that is actually Resistance to thermal shock and has high resistance to heat. Ah, because usually when your 
when you actually watch like F1 or like racing competition, you see those break discs actually turning into red color uh, because they break too hard. Their speed is so fast, they have to break that efficient and it cause the break disc to turn red, to turn hot. Okay, so of course for here, we actually have your ceramic. Okay. And then lastly, we have what? We have your car to, to actually make of steel. Okay, so from here, you have to change the body of car with steel. Okay, it's 98% iron, 0 0.2 to 2% 2 of carbon. So that's why I say it's actually uh, doesn't really matter on the percentage. Or is it 99 or is it 98? Because as long as 0 0.2 to 2%, it's always a steel. Okay, so alloy is harder than pure metal and the car is not easily dented. So guys, I gave you guys a one minute. Okay, write down all the answers here. But as I say, guys, these are all memorization. You must memorize yourself. Okay, guys, can I go a little bit faster? Because the next question is still ceramic and stuff. Last question on ceramic. Huh? I hope this come out in essay. Huh? Is it? Is this easy? <laughs> Feel that it's a bit Karen. Huh? <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> wow, is it everyone complaining? Huh? Don't come, don't come. Huh? Ah, yeah. Your reaction come up better. Why not both? <laughs> Eee. Okay, la, come on. Okay. So now, next page. Huh? Yeah, going down. Huh? Okay, we have our composite material again, VWXYZ, okay, of silica, sodium carbonate, calcium oxide, yttrium oxide, vibrium carbonate, concrete, okay, glass, uh, glass or transparent polymer, silver chloride, glass with polyester. So name the materials K, W, X, Y, and Z. So silica with sodium carbonate will with ca uh, calcium oxide. So what's V? What's V? It's actually having glass and then sodium carbonate and calcium oxide. So solar lime, uh, no, no, no. Composite material is not, is not the glass topic you learn. Composite material means you have to mix more stuff. Glass with plastic, glass with other stuff. Okay. So the first one, the glass with your sodium carbonate and calcium oxide, these two actually is your component for optic fiber. Uh, if you forgot about that, now you know. Lah. So silica with these two, optic fiber. Yttrium, uh, you see yttrium, uh, you know what is this. Lah. So yttrium, you know this should be your superconductor. Okay. okay, concrete and steel, reinforced concrete. Okay, Glass and transparent polymer and silver chloride. You see this silver chloride? You see this word silver is your photochromic glass. Glass with uh, polyester, so glass with plastic can use this thing called fiberglass. You know what's fiberglass? Glass fiber, yes. Uh, to actually make your uh, helmet, okay? Your helmet, it actually looks like a plastic, but it's actually stronger than plastic uh, because we have fiberglass, so glass with plastic. So the optical fiber, superconductor, reinforced concrete, photochromic glass, fiberglass. Okay, the special properties of all the uh, composite materials here. So we know that number one, we use uh, transmit data using light. Superconductor can actually able to do it. Uh, can give you uh, zero resistance at very low temperature. Reinforced concrete can actually give you like uh, strengthening uh, your normal concrete, hard and strong. Okay, photochromic glass turns down under UV ray. Fiberglass can actually strong but at the same time, it's actually lightweight. Ah, so plastic plus glass is strong and light. So these are the stuff. So enable information to be transmitted in the form of light at a very high speed. So zero electrical resistance, okay, and has very strong magnetic force. Okay, should be having a condition now. If you want to put a condition, it should be fine. Okay, hard and strong, darkens when exposed to the sunlight, strong and light for your fiberglass. Okay, last question for composite materials. Okay, composite material, we known as 
it's known as the W. I think I think there's a there's a space bar here. Okay, so W is known as a very strong magnet. So guys, the only thing you learn in the syllabus, very strong magnet, should be superconductor lah. So describe the application of composite magnet W in the transportation field based on its special properties. Because it is a very strong magnet, you can build a train called the magnetic levitation train. Ah, you know the bullet train in Japan, okay, in China, okay. Those are called the maglev train. So for here, how do you actually be able to lift up the whole heavy train? You need low, low, low temperature to give you strong, strong, strong magnet. Then you can lift up the whole train. Ah, so from here. So it has zero electrical resistance, lightweight, very strong magnetic force in transportation used to mobilize your maglev train. The keyword here, maglev train. So the strong magnet causes the train to hold, hover over the rail railway track, allows the train to move at very high speed because of zero friction. Uh, not zero, uh, lesser friction. Ah, uh, then physics. Ah, <laughs> uh, see, physics chemistry, ah, uh, relatable. Okay, but you all confirm forget physics already, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, guys, congratulations. We are done with form four. We are finally halfway through the exercise. <laughs> this is where I predict. <laughs> Another half of this book, whether can we finish or not? They so tao to tao. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. You tabule already, ah? Uh, ever cannot. Tabule after chemistry tomorrow, okay? Ah. You suddenly say you can stay up for the whole night and study yourself. Aiyah. Uh. Then I give you answer, uh. You go and do yourself. Still got MS. Oh, MS, that one after chemistry. No need, no need. <laughs> Aiyah. Uh. Okay, okay, guys. Can I? Uh, moving on, ah? Uh. So in Form 5, Chapter 1, we call them the redox reaction. So in redox reaction, oh, guys, hold on, ah? Uh. Wow, Xiao Yi. Wait, come on, look at that. Come on. Okay, so in moving on, in from 5 chapter 1, we have your redox reaction, which is our say, GG pen ink finish. What to do? Okay, let's finish the whole book. Uh, you need another pen, a new pen. Okay, so when we talk about uh, redox reaction, we have this thing called the SEPS, the Standard Electrode Potential Series. And that series actually, as I said, usually is not provided in exam, but they will give you the equation that you need in your question. Can I? So if you remember that there are always the electrons on the left side of the equation, and then yeah, you have your E0 values on the right-hand side with all the negative and positive values. So everything given here, you might not know whether is this uh, arrangement, is it correct or not. Uh, so usually in exam, sometimes they will ask you to do this. Arrange your atom of ions okay, in ascending order of the strength of oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So when you try, try to recall back into this table, uh, electrons must be on the left side and EO values, as E0 values, should be starting from the smallest voltage to the largest voltage. So according to this form, see this form here, are they arranged in the correct position? Uh, is it pro from small to big? Uh, so I would say no. Okay, so in this case here, uh, since they are not arranged in the correct order, we need to rearrange them. So actually, guys, I think your book got this answer. I'm not sure. Lah, but uh, my book got this answer already. So of course, the first thing to do is to actually arrange them in correct order. Do you see actually, you have your E0 values here from small to big. Ah, so in exam, ah, you might need to do this yourself. At here, like, to save you some time, okay? We put this here first. And then you have to actually look, uh, refer to this. Means you don't look at this table anymore because this table wrong arrangement. Ma. Now you look at this correct arrangement. Ma. You arrange them according from smallest value to the biggest value. Okay, nah? okay, once you have this value here, now they want you to arrange the strength of oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So guys, what is the strength? How do I know where is your oxidizing agent, where is your reducing agent? We have a way to memorize this. We call this the six pack stable ah okay guys remember six pack stable the one that i have 
Sorry, sorry. I don't have six packs, okay? I got family pack. Okay, so back to here is you see the W, S, S, W. Uh, so weak stand, uh, W stands for weak, S stands for strong. Means every chemical on your right side is your reducing agent. Every chemical on your left side is your oxidizing agent. So once you have these two agents, okay, you have double chin. Hey, hey, don't, don't hurt me. <laughs> hey. so, uh, so for this agent, uh, once you see uh, all the right side chemical is a reducing agent, all the left hand side is your oxidizing agent, go according to the strength here. Okay. Wait, uh. Someone coming in, someone try, trying to join the class, but then keep on disconnecting. Okay, so according to the strength of your reducing agent, I want it from ascending order. Ascending order means from weak to strong. So who's the weakest reducing agent? So according to our six packs table, weak is at the bottom, strong at the top. Ah, so your arrangement should go from A, G, C, U, Z, and M, G. Okay. Then for oxidizing agent, weak to strong is top to bottom. So it should be Mg2+, N2+, U2+, Ag+. So your answer should be like this. Okay, so based on your answer in A, okay, now let's explain, will this following reaction occur? So guys, do you remember what is the requirement to actually have reaction? according to our six packs table. What agent plus what agent? Strong and strong, very good. You must have strong reducing agent reacting with strong oxidizing agent. Only you can have reaction, ma. Karina. So of course from here, let's check number one. Based on the answer in A, I want to see whether Mg solid and Cu2 plus can have reaction or not. So what you're gonna do is you go to the equation with Mg. You see you got Mg2 plus and Mg, ma. Which one do you select? Ah, you select exactly according to your question. Question is asking you Mg, not Mg2+. plus. So that's why I'll be selecting Mg. Ah, okay. Then Cu2+, plus. it's in the equation of Cu there, select Cu2+. plus. You see that? Do you know why, why I circle Mg and Cu2+, plus? because that's what they're asking. I don't circle Cu, I don't circle Mg. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't circle Mg2+. plus. You get it? And then by having these two circles, what you have to do is you carry these two circles right now and try to compare to my table. Yeah. So one circle on the top right, one circle at the yeah, sorry. At the bottom left. You see that? You see it matches in this way. Top right, bottom left. Okay. So if it's top right, bottom left, it's a strong reducing agent and a strong oxidizing agent. Yes, the reaction occur. Got it? Can I? Okay, but how do I gonna explain this? Okay, so number one, you see my, my answer here. Huh? This one is usually in five marks. So you can see from here. So the reaction occur, or you can actually don't write this. Huh? You can just write the first one. Mg is a stronger reducing agent. It loses electron easily and oxidation occur. Uh, and guys, because you, if you actually try to recall back, Reducing agent undergo oxidation. Okay. Well, Cu2 plus is actually a stronger oxidizing agent that it gains electron easily and reduction actually occur. Okay. Since you have oxidation, since you have reduction, redox reaction occur between strong reducing agent and strong oxidizing agent. And they both happen at the same time. We call them redox reaction. Okay, can steady up, steady up. Okay, so if you are guys, if you guys are okay with number one, try to predict number two. Do you think B two will have reaction or not? B two. Are you still writing? Okay, can. Okay, someone say got reaction? Anyone say no reaction? Just to check. Wow, a bit a bit cold here. Let me off my account. Ah uh, nah. Your, your, now your turn to on account. <laughs> ah 
We take turn on icon, huh? saving the earth. Yeah. Okay, so number two, actually, yes, it is still having a reaction because now question two is still mg, means I'm going to take this away, but instead I'm having Zn2 plus as my the other choice. So is this still top right and bottom left? You see that? Ah, you try to imagine the table here. Top right, bottom left. Got reaction. So do the same thing, but just change the keyword accordingly. So if you see answer like this, everything's the same except for Cl2 plus becomes N2 plus. Same, same here. Okay, uh, can I? Uh? So this is question B2. Okay, why it disappeared? Ah, this. Okay, I give you like one minute. Okay, I start my timer. Uh, one minute. Uh. Uh, yeah. My timer left the meeting again. This timer. Uh, so naughty. Keep leave my meeting. Okay, so number three, do you think number three have reaction according to our arrangement on the top? So if I remove my, my circles here, so number three is between Cu and Zn2 plus. So Cu without charge. Huh? So I'm going to have Cu, okay, and Zn2 plus. So Zn2 plus. It's here. So if you try to imagine the table here, okay, it falls on the top left and bottom right. So top left, bottom right, it's a weak oxidizing agent and a weak reducing agent. So definitely no reaction. Ah, so again, okay. yeah, so another minute for you all to write. Actually, if it's weak and strong, then reaction can still occur. Don't worry about that, because there will never be a case with between weak and strong agent. Uh, if you selected weak and strong agent, uh, something wrong with your selection. No need to think about reaction got occur, uh, because you selected wrong stuff. Uh, okay, so guys. One minute idea. Time's up. Huh? Esmond Go can send me last minute class video. I didn't hear my alarm. Wait. English, your best friend. <laughs> Let me send him the link. Uh, hiya. You see, Mithilish, you never help your friend. I, uh, you want Aspen to fail, is it? OK. 
Okay, so then, okay, never, never mind after SCM, I don't know him. <laughs> wow, wow, this friendship so fragile. So True friendship. Oh, that's how true friendship works. Lah. Okay, guys, let's move on. Okay. Arrange the atoms and ions in the table 10.1 in an ascending order of the strength and oxidizing agent, uh, reducing agents, suggest metal P and metal Q. So now, first of all, are they in the correct arrangement? If you check carefully, P2 plus, okay. Uh, guys, by the way, it's actually just one equation. Uh, just that the top one is BM version. The top bottom one is English version. Don't get confused, okay? So they are not, in the correct arrangement. So therefore, I should actually rearrange them. But they want it in the strength of agents, means they don't want to see the list out. Okay, if you do the list, no marks. So I can have empty space here. Let's try to rearrange them again. So who should be the first equation? Vision. I want to arrange according to what? From the smallest value to the biggest value. So which one is the smallest value? The mg1, correct. So I'll be rearranging them. mg2 plus, plus two electron become mg. The value is negative 2.38 volt. Who's next? After mg, who's the next smaller value? Zinc, correct. So Zn2 plus, plus two electron, you get Zn. The EO value is negative 0 0.76 volt. Then, to which one? To P or Q? P first, correct. So P, 2 plus, plus 2E, you get P. EO value equals to positive 0 0.34. And lastly, it's your Q. Okay, so we know MG, we know Zing, we know... Uh, these two, but P and Q, we're not sure. Ah, it's an unknown. So now you want to arrange them in your ascending order in your agent. So according to our agents, we know all the right-hand side, reducing agent, strength like this. Or the left-hand side is your oxidizing agent, the strength like this. Ah, okay. So your answer should be uh, for oxidizing agent, Fb2+, Zn2+, Pb, P2+, Q2+. Then for reducing agent is Q, P, Zn, Mg. But suggest P and Q. So what is the P that is actually below zinc and actually having two plus? Hey, sorry, Q is one plus. I'm so sorry, Q is one plus. I copy wrongly. Ah, what do you think P is? Any temba? <laughs> Don't temba that way. Okay, if you actually realize that this uh this series here is very similar to this thing called reactivity series. The higher one, the more reactive, the lower one, the less reactive, okay? So if you try to recall back to your reactivity series, P is a metal that should be less reactive than zinc. Ah, so zinc got what? Below zinc got like uh, iron, uh, tin, lead, a lot of answers there. Lah. So for here, if you actually check the values, okay, so, uh, here can be a lot of answer. Can be copper, can be iron. Yes, correct. Can be copper, can be iron, depending on your analysis. Q is a metal with one plus. A metal with one plus, not much actually. Ah, what metal can have one positive ion? Silver, correct. So answer should be this. Okay, moving on. Uh. Okay, so we have set one with Mg plus Zn2 plus. Set two is P plus Zn2 plus. Based on the answer, whether will there any have any reaction or not? Ah, uh, so number one, Mg plus Zn2 plus. Do you still look at this table given? No, ah, uh, this are not not correct. Uh. refer to your own one. Then you gotta think about it, teacher. If what if I do, 
I arrange strongly. Then the whole thing below all wrong. That's how GG it is. Ah, okay. So that's why from here, you, have, you must arrange them in the correct arrangement. Then you check MG and ZN2 plus. So MG and ZN2 plus. Sure. Since they gave specific yield value, only one answer. Actually, only one answer. Ah, but as I said, uh, this can be do. You can be. You can check the value if they only give you the, the table. Ah, means the whole table. Then only you can check ma. So it depends on the on the exam la, because this is the first year, and no one knows whether this thing, the whole table will be provided or not. Okay, some teachers say yes, some teachers say no. I'm not sure lah. Okay, let's just go into the exam tomorrow and let me know. Okay, so first thing come up from exam tomorrow, uh, let me know, is there any SEPS table provided? <laughs> then, then what you can do, you can do nothing about it. You can benefit your juniors. <laughs> uh, you guys are the, the testing lab rat. Hey. Okay, so from here, you see, uh, uh, MG and ZN2+, plus, MG ZN2+, plus, top right, bottom left. Strong reducing agents, strong oxidizing agent. The answer is yes. Next one is P. Uh, we are white rats. Yeah, la. What to do? Okay, you all first, first, first year new, new syllabus, are more MCO. I said, uh, okay, next one is P plus ZN2 plus. P is this one. ZN2 plus is this one. But between these two, it's bottom right, top left. It's weak and weak. No reaction. Ah, so guys, please. Right out as usual just now. Okay. So reaction one, uh, set one reaction occurs because uh MG is a stronger reducing agent compared to zinc. Okay, it loses electron easily. Okay, and reaction occur. Zn2 plus is a stronger oxidizing agent compared to Mg2 plus. Okay, it gains electron easily. Okay, and reduction occur. Redox reaction uh occur between strong reducing agent and strong oxidizing agent. So that's for set one. So it only needs three marks. That's why you see I put a double slash there. It means you can selectively choose either one to write. But if it's like one set five marks, uh, then you have to put both. Get it? But because now one set only can take three marks. Ma, so no need to waste time. La. Okay, once again, timer up one minute. Getting sleepy or we start we sit, we started since 9 a.m. Uh, legit. Really getting tired. Eh? And we are still at form five first chapter. <laughs> so do faster. Hey, no, I don't want to do faster, ma. You also need uh you need you all need time to write, ma. <laughs> Wait, Hui Ling, don't use your speed to put on other people. Uh. You you cannot compare. Okay. Okay, uh, five more seconds, done with reaction one, I uh, said one. Set two has no reaction because it's a weak reducing agent and a weak oxidizing agent, means no oxidation, no reduction, no redox reaction. Ah, so answer is reaction does not occur. Okay, so another minute. Ah, feeling sleepy, huh? right faster. Right, messy. You don't write so messy. Uh. Later tomorrow you go to school. Uh. Cannot understand your own handwriting. Tomorrow come home, confirm die. Why? Why die? Okay, ma. Tomorrow come home and celebrate uh, chemistry getting A. Plus. Easy A. Plus. You hope so? No, no, no. Don't hope for it. You fight for it. So scared, describe experiment. Ah, that one is the video class. La. After finish this part two, do part one. Uh, of course. 
finish every part we provide you. It's not give you for what? After tomorrow, uh, basically it turns into a, a, a paper, okay, that is useless. Can burn it. Hey, don't, don't, don't. Sell it for money. Hello. Ah. We Asian, you know, must do all this calculation. I already have every subject stack for recycling. Ah, correct, correct. Sell it for money. Some more A4 paper are uh, quite expensive. One. My handwriting too ugly, no one buy. Hey, yeah, they don't care your handwriting one. Hey, they just recycle, they, you get money one. Ma. I tell you, la, you sell all your TC notes from, since from one until from five. Uh, maybe maximum can get five in here. Not much one. Uh, uh, the notes you sell, uh, five ringgit, uh, ten ringgit. Uh. If you sell to recycle men. Uh. Okay, guys, done. Uh? Okay, move on. Okay, now moving on is the next topic on your Volta Excel. Ah, guys, before we move into, move, uh, into Volta Excel, do you remember the two cells we have in your syllabus? So we actually did this uh, during the revision before your SPM, remember that uh, February revision. So we are almost there, okay, correct. Another cell called electrolytic cell, yes. What's the main difference between voltaic and electrolytic? Voltaic don't have what? Don't have battery, very good. Electrolytic, got battery. Okay, okay, okay now, uh, let's check these values here. Mm, seems like the values are all correct, from small to big, these are no need to rearrange. What is meant by redox reaction? Oxidation, reduction occur simultaneously, or you can say occur at the same time. Chemical reaction where oxidation and reduction occur simultaneously. Okay, answer me B, guys. Who is the strongest reducing agent? Who is the strongest reducing agent? So according to our six packs table, Six packs table, weak, strong, strong, weak. Uh. So, Mg, yes, correct. Magnesium. But what is the oxidation number for chromium in this thing called a dichromate ion? So, this is actually a, a mini calculation. Okay, if you guys talk about this, because they also define chromium oxidation number means a charge of Cr inside this whole ion here. How to find it? Uh, first of all, you have to assume a few things first. Number one, what is the charge of O? What's the charge for one oxygen? So one oxygen is actually two minus, right? So try to do this like a max. You assume chromium is an unknown. So you have Cr2, Cr2, so means Cr times two, lah, plus O7 is negative two times seven, equals to the whole thing is your charge on your top right side, equals to negative two. You get how this maths equation come out? Ah, then you do the maths. So negative two times seven, negative 14. Bring over is plus 14. So if you found it, CR is actually positive six. Ah, that's why guys, do you remember the name of this guy? We normally call this dichromate six. So the six stands for the charge, okay? Because the chromium here is six plus, so dichromate six. Okay, then you see a voltaic cell, a chemical cell. What would you observe in beaker A after 30 minutes? So guys, what's the theory of voltaic cell? Okay, where the minus two come from, which one? The O or the last one? Is it? The last one. Because do you see the whole ion equals to the whole ion is having a charge negative too. That is the total charge of everything passed together. Ah, okay. Can I? Okay, so when we do in a chemical cell, or we can call it a voltaic cell, we have two different metals that will immerse into two different solutions, and you will actually form electron flows. So when electron flow, it creates electricity, and then that's your theory of your voltaic cell where you actually use chemical to generate electricity. Ah, okay. So what will you observe in beaker A after 30 minutes? So when you do chemical cell, guys, chemical cell here, yeah, what happened at voltaic cell? 
anyone have any ID? Ah, so you have to recall back this. A volatile cell must have redox reaction. Ma. A redox reaction means must have one guy, one chemical that donate electron, one chemical that receive electron. So how I know who donate, who receive eh? Ah, you have to check your, your metal, the two agents you have here. So copper and tin, if you look up to this table, copper is Cu, tin is Sn, okay? So they are both on your right-hand side, ma, because these two is your electrode. You, you, I'm, you get that? I'm trying to look at these two electrodes. Ah. So who is your stronger agent? Ah, if you know, right side is your reducing agent. Ma. So top right should be your stronger reducing agent. So this stronger reducing agent will undergo oxidation. Ah, so when he undergo oxidation, no, no other way, okay, he have to donate electron. So Tina will donate electron because of oxidation. So he will donate electron like this. And copper is forced to receive the electron. Ah. But copper, when he receives electron, ah, he, actually, he actually just as a, as a transporter, He's just there to transport the, the electron into the solution and receive by someone uh, because electron is negative charge. Ma. Someone that is positive will receive the electron, which is in phase copper to nitrate solution. So after 30 minutes, what happened in beaker A? So when the electron comes into beaker A, your copper two will receive the electron and turn into a copper solid. Okay, so from here, my answer here is your copper 2, uh, okay, your copper 2 Cu2 plus, he will receive the electron, uh, then become Cu metal product. So the first thing here, what is the color of this solution? Blue. Uh, how you know? Why you know it's blue? Because Cu2 plus. Okay? But the blue color now, right now, should they increase or decrease? Decrease. Why? Because you actually use up Cu2 plus to form Cu. Ma. So Cu2 plus getting lesser and lesser, definitely the blue color decrease. So the first answer here should be intensity of blue color copper to nitrate solution decreases. And then uh, this second answer, I think is not suitable for here because they want to observe in beaker A. You get it? So I will say this is actually wrong. It's not wrong answer, I mean. It's wrong for this question. Because tin actually, when he donate electron, he may not actually become dissolved and becomes thinner. This is not wrong if it's at B. But now they only want A. Ah, so and let me give you another answer. So when you form copper, where copper go? Copper will stick outside the copper electron. So what happened to your copper electron? Okay, so copper electron. Okay, forms brown solid and becomes thicker. Okay, which electrode will undergo oxidation? I just mentioned this. Ah, so explain your answer in terms of standard electrode potential. So we mentioned that tin will undergo oxidation because why? He is a stronger reducing agent. Okay. So because of the values, because of the uh, more negative values. So from here, tin electron, because of the standard electron potential value, the E0 value, for tin is more negative than standard electron potential of copper. Because of the value, you select the tin to undergo oxidation, the strong reducing agent. Okay, and then cell notation. Ah, that's your bit. Ah. Do you all remember how to write cell notation? So cell notation is actually quite simple if you remember the trend. Okay, but then eh, I believe both of you guys don't remember that already. A bit lazy type, but you know how to do a lot of this. Ah, you always start from where? The, the beginning and the end is always your electrode. And then in the, in the middle should be your uh, solution. I mean, uh, I mean the ions, the specific ions. 
with a double line in the middle to represent the salt bridge. Okay, so how do I start? You start with the guy with that donate electron, which is a tin. Ah, so tin here is Sn. Okay, make sure to put in the physical state as n solid. So if I write E0 value instead of full name, I still get marks. Uh, technically, yes. Ah, but as I said, this is the first year of SPM. I cannot guarantee you. So uh, to be safe, put in the name and the symbol. And I will say name is confirmed acceptable. Lah. Okay, so as start with the electron that donates electron, and then the solution that you are immersed into is the thin solution as N2 plus, which is an aqueous solution. Then double line to represent salt bridge. The solution that your copper immersed is copper two nitrate ions, which is Cu aqueous. Last line, single line is copper itself. So cell notation always start and end with your electron. The middle always put your ions. Of your solution. Then in the middle, always have a double line to represent salt bridge. And calculate voltage. Guys, do you remember how to calculate cell voltage? That is a formula. Any idea? And not uh, cathode minus and not. Okay, very good. So E, the cell, cell voltage is the EO value of cathode minus the EO value of n naught. That's very good. But bigger number minus smaller number, wrong. <laughs> ah, cannot, because you have to write out formula. <laughs> Never write out formula teacher my minus your mark. Ah. OK, so don't be chip scared again. Okay? Give in your formula. So who is your cathode? Who is your anode? Guys, if without battery, uh, how to find anode and cathode? No battery. How? Ah, how to find, right? So guys, if you remember, without battery, okay, there is a way to memorize, which is very relatable to your YouTube question. Do you guys remember YouTube? You go YouTube to watch what? <laughs> I go YouTube to watch like a uh, documentary la, like uh, like entertainment movies la. Ah, but someone, someone, go YouTube to watch. <laughs> ah, go YouTube to watch porn. Ah, yeah, you also gully. So the T, yeah. Okay, why? Because, no, guys, no point in YouTube, okay, just kidding. Okay? So the reason why I say this four alphabets here, because that's the way to memorize that. So O stands for oxidizing agent, R stands for reducing agent. So oxidizing agents pairs with P, which is positive terminal, reducing agents pairs with N, which is a negative terminal. So this terminal here will actually help you to determine your anode and cathode. Why? Because voltaic cell, okay, voltaic cell, no battery is A minus. Uh, if it's having battery, electrolytic cell is A plus. So in this case, we know that oxidizing agent is your positive terminal at the same time, also your cathode. Okay? Then your reducing agent is your negative terminal, it's also at the same time your anode. Okay? Yeah, so of course for here, we know that this how we say tin is your reducing agent. Ma. So tin is reducing agent. Ra means he is negative terminal, he is your anode. Then the other side is your oxidizing agent. He is your positive terminal, means he should be your cathode. Okay, ah, so now, who, who minus who? So cathode minus anode. So cathode is copper. So the value for copper, is positive 0.34 minus the EO, EO uh, the value for negative term, uh, your anode, the negative 0 0.14. So negative, negative become positive, you get positive 
0.48 volt. Don't forget to put in the positive sign, huh? quite important. Huh? Okay, now, based on answer in C2, how can you increase the voltage of cell? Since the voltage is between what? Basically between this and this, right? The distance between them. So if you want to increase voltage, you can use silver instead of copper or tin instead of magnesium. Means you find further distance, you should get larger voltage. So that's it from here. Our answer is replace tin with magnesium electrode and replace a tin two solution with magnesium nitrate. Technically, you move up. You take tin away, you move up towards magnesium. Then you get a further distance, you get a larger value. Okay, guys, hold on, huh? moving on. Huh? Okay, move on. Huh? Ah, if I keep slowly go, uh, I also get sleepy, I, especially at this hot weather. Why not? We all go sleep. Just kidding. Just, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> you see, Hui Ling be like, huh? You don't go away unless you finish. <laughs> Zoe, <laughs> agree 100%, but no, sorry. Okay, so moving down. Okay, you're actually having another picture, cell one, cell two. So we have your, uh, let's see, silver, copper at both sides, one side with silver, one side with zinc, with the same solution, with their own solution. So here is your blue color increases. This side is blue color decreases. So state the chemical formula for copper to nitrate. Wow, wow, it's a free marks, guys. What's the cop, uh, chemical formula for copper to nitrate? So copper two, that's Cu2 plus. Nitrate is NO3 minus. So therefore, Cu NO3 two. Okay, identify the negative terminal in cell one. Ah, nice. How to find terminal? I just told you, ma, okay? ah, you all go YouTube to watch porn. Hiya. <laughs> so in cell one, uh, find your agent first, okay? Because to use this method, you have to find your agent first. So it's silver and copper. So silver is AG, copper is this one. So they are both reducing agent, but only can choose one. Ah, so therefore, the, the stronger one is your, your reducing agent. So I'll be selecting CU. So CU is what? CU is your reducing agent. Ah, so reducing agent, negative terminal. Oxidizing agent, positive terminal. So therefore, uh, CU is reducing agent. So it should be negative terminal at this side. Positive terminal at silver side. Ah, so who is your negative terminal in C1? It's your copper. Copper electron. Calculate voltage of cell one. Uh, how to calculate voltage? Technically, take uh, your cathode minus anode. Lah. Ah, yeah, then same thing. Lah. So cathode should be 0 0.8, okay, minus 0 0.34. You should get zero, uh, positive 0 0.46 volt. Okay, it's a repeating question, guys. Okay, that's why I'm doing quite fast. Write the cell notation. What is cell notation? Cell notation means, uh, as I said again, two electrons on the left and right, the beginning and the after. So what you're gonna do in the between is put in their ions. So it started off donating electrons from the strong reducing agent. So you should start with Cu solid. Oh, for Cl2, sorry guys. I almost got tricked. Hiya. Almost, almost. They want Cl2, not Cl1. Hi, almost, almost. Okay. 
So cell two is copper and zinc. Ah. So copper and zinc different in your because zinc is higher. He should be your reduce your stronger reducing agent. So he will be the one that donate electron. So start off with zinc. Solid. Immerse into zinc ion aqueous. And then salt bridge into the other solution, the ion in the other solution is your copper two nitrate. So it's Cu2 plus aqueous. And then connects to your copper electron. Oh, shit, guys. I'm so sorry. Thanks for reminding. Do you see they give you concentration? If they give you concentration, put in the concentration beside the aqueous. Means like this. It is have aqueous 1.0 mole per dm cube. Same thing goes for this. Aqueous 1.0 mole per dm cube. <sighs> See, I do my ass also pain. Let me stand up a bit. Okay, now explain the difference in observation. Okay, so uh, yeah, why you say uh, copper two nitrate at cell one, uh, the blue color increase. So blue color come from where? Eh? Blue color come from Cu two plus. So if you want him to increase or oh, your C two plus like, must increase, oh. yeah. So why the cell one? Why the C two plus increase? Uh, because number one, you realize that your copper is the one that gonna actually donate electron, mah. Correct, nah? So when he donate electron, he will actually have equation like this. So I hit here, here is C U becomes C U two plus. Okay, but at the other side, oh. Copper don't donate because zinc donate. Mah. So zinc donate, copper is forced to receive. Oh. So at here, ah, your copper receive electron to become copper. So you see the main difference is one is copper donate electron, one is copper receive electron. So the one that produce Cu2+, you have more blue color. The one that use up, you guys see, copper 2 plus becomes Cu, you use up copper 2 plus. Mah. So therefore, this is the one that actually and will it decrease your blue color because you're getting lesser and lesser CO2 plus. Okay, so from here, answer should be something like this. Okay, so we talk about the uh, value first. It's more negative, more positive. Okay, more negative, less, less negative. And so in cell one, copper atom release, or you can say donate electron to form copper two. That's why blue color more. But in cell two, Copper to receive electron to form copper atom. So the reaction is actually inverse. One is Cu to Cu2 plus, one is Cu2 plus to Cu. So that's why the color one increase, one decrease. So you can write your value instead of standard electrode potential value. Uh, as I said, it's best to write full name. Don't risk. You guys are the first year of new syllabus. No one can guarantee that E0 value is acceptable. Right, full name. Okay, so next one, draw a label apparatus using all the apparatus given. Mark the diagram, the positive terminal and the negative terminal. So technically everything given. And then you got what? You got iron with iron solution, silver with silver nitrate solution. Ah, yeah, simple. Ah, yeah. So what you can do? Okay, like my drawing a bit ugly, ah, but it should be fine. Okay. Ah, uh, first you prepare the two beakers here. Okay, because you got a salt bridge. Ah, so got salt bridge. You can use two different beakers. So, so it should be. Let's say for here I have uh, iron into iron to nitrate solution and then bond to a voltmeter with another solution. So this one here is silver 
and silver nitrate. And then they are not complete connected, so that's why we need a salt bridge. Oh, my drawing is so pretty. Pretty than yours, of course. Okay, so guys, if you are done, guys, all done, huh? next page. Huh? Okay, now you see a hard pacemaker, Sun Bio. <laughs> so hard pacemaker have successfully prolonged the life of many patients with a heart disease, with PTSD. <laughs> Okay, ma. Take one. Okay, a heart pacemaker consists of a pair of zinc and silver metal, which function as a chemical cell in the body. The cell is implanted to the patient's chest. So using the same pair of metal as in the pacemaker, okay, use a suitable electrolyte to draw an apparatus setup for the chemical cell in the laboratory and label the negative and positive terminal of the cell. And the two metals is zinc and silver. So actually, not much difference, right? So you just have to do the same drawing. Okay, connect to voltmeter. Okay, and then connect with saw bridge. And then immerse into a solution. So if it's A silver should be silver nitrate solution. If it's a zinc, it'll be a zinc nitrate solution. Looks good. Just the hair, I think, a bit messy. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, now again with the electro potential series. Okay, the label, oh, sorry, thanks. Thanks for reminding. The negative and positive terminal. So according to my agent, uh, zinc is, should be actually your reducing agent, zinc. So he'll donate electron and silver will receive electron. So negative terminal, positive terminal. Okay, now state the agent. So they arrange correctly already, small to big. So the arrangement, the agent should be quite easy to check. So the oxidizing agent and reducing agent in the pacemaker. So it should be what plus what? Ah, so you know that zinc is the strong reducing agent. Ma. So you'll be selecting zinc instead of AG. So AG not selected, but his solution got ion. So when he receives the electron, okay, it goes to the uh, solution. It doesn't change the size of the, the silver and stuff. So this one here, Ag plus, because of the, the ions there. Because you selected Zn over Ag. 
Okay, so state the agent. So I just told you. So oxidizing agent is your silver ion. Reducing agent is a zinc. Okay, EO, EO value, same thing. Take cathode minus anode. Show what is in salt solution. Salt solution means positive ion and negative ions. State two uses of electrolysis. So guys, do you remember the function of electrolysis? Like what's the purpose of doing electrolysis? We use we take battery to do to do some stuff, right? Electroplating, uh, that's one of it, correct? Okay. So uh electroplating is just one uh, purify, correct? Uh also correct. So there's a lot of answers here. So but they want two. So two of it is electroplating and purification. Boxite is what extraction can okay? boxite. If you talk about oxide, it's about extraction, correct, correct. So electrolysis, three answers here. Okay, guys. Okay, before I move on to the next question, I'll give you guys a five minute break. Okay, go get yourself some snack, go get yourself something to make you awake. Okay, because the weather is making me very sleepy, also. Let's make ourselves a little bit more energetic with this break. Okay, ah, don't sleep behind the screen. Huh? If not, you're going to sleep through the whole night. Okay, so guys. All good, huh? Can I? Can I? I have a break. Have a key cat. Sleep. Hi, yeah, yeah. So sleep, 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 keep sleep. Hi, yeah, willing. Don't sleep. Eh? Finish first. <laughs> this whiling. She comment. Wow, got break time so good, the man. <laughs> She'd want to let you all break. Eh? I... If part A, I use same beaker can. Uh, this one? This one part A? Uh, if you want to use the same beaker, let's, let, let's check. Huh? Heart disease. Uh, okay, technically the theory is the same. Okay, means if you do simple chemical cell, if you just put one solution but two different electrodes, it's doable. It's doable. Uh, since uh, suitable electrolyte, yes, they never specify anything. So yes, correct. Uh, if you put like zinc silver in like sodium chloride solution, then okay, also good. Okay, can I? Ah, so guys, get yourself some snacks with this sleepy weather. Okay, I can, I can. Because I didn't give break time last week. Wow, why didn't I give break time? Ah? Suffering biology. Never give break time also bio hard to do. <laughs> ah, you see, she's gonna, she gonna, she gonna scold me. <laughs> Yes, can I? Uh, let me set a timer. Okay, five minutes. Uh, get yourself some snacks. Okay, I also want to get some snack. Okay, let me go get some snack. Okay, guys, five minutes.
Kishan asks, teacher, for the anode in photon XL, is it always positive? Hey, you turn back. Is that the same? Photon XL, anode negative terminal. Electrolytic cell, anode positive terminal. Okay, so that's the, that's the main difference. Uh. Brain tired already. How? <laughs> brain tired, no need to do. Uh. Huh? Brain tired, no need SPM. Uh. But also must SPM on uh. my... Suji so leaving at six, is it? You don't want to finish, ah? the rest you do yourself. Ah? <laughs> if God, I want to read experiment. <laughs> if God colorless gas at anode means got, uh, it end not, ah. end not means got anions. Anions means uh, usually is oxygen gas. Yes. Because and I and not is usually selecting uh, OH minus. So when you discharge OH minus, you should get uh, oxygen gas, O2. Okay, so guys, I hope these five minutes can bring up you a little bit. Okay. Uh, so okay, like I understand that uh, because some of you uh, didn't actually study through the the part one and part three. <laughs> Wanna need wanna, wanna do some describe experiment ah. So I'll try to finish at least until carbon compound. Ah, because carbon compound got uh also quite important, ma. Okay, uh, from part chapter one and from part chapter two. And then the last three chapters, uh, the heat of reaction, the nanotech and stuff, those you can do self-do. Okay, it depends on the time. Lah. Yeah. Uh, if can, I just continue. Okay, so moving on in page number 37. Okay, we actually have uh, three electrolytic cells here, okay, on the cathode and the anode, everything provided, observation provided, concentration provided, so, and also the table provided. Okay, now, explain why there are differences in the observation for anode for cell one and cell two. So cell one, uh, what's the difference? Everything is cathode, uh, your carbon is your cathode anode, okay? So guys, if you remember when you do uh, electrolysis, and uh, because this is electrolytic cell, if you remember, electrolytic cell got three different factors to decide what to be select at your anode and cathode. Remember that? Ah, so what are the three factors? Number one, if you are in a dilute solution, you will be selecting your strong reducing agent and strong oxidizing agent. Means at both sides, anode and cathode, select your strongest agent to be actually discharged, to actually carry out chemical reaction. Okay? Then, if it's a dilute, uh, dilute, uh, this is not what we learn in DIMA. If it's concentrated, uh, at the next one, you see how I know it's dilute or concentrated? Because of the uh, 0 0.0001 and 1 1.0. So one is dilute, one is concentrated. So by having this, what we know is, uh, who, who, who this? Okay, so for concentrated, at the cathode, you do the same thing, select the stronger agent. But at the end, not, uh, you have to check if got hair light. Hair light means what? Hair light means your Cl minus, Br minus, and I minus. If there is these three in your choices of answer, in your ions, select them instead of the stronger agent. But if don't have, select back the stronger agent. Ah, so there is something you have to think, remember from here, there's some condition here. If it's concentrated, your anode have to select hair like first. But if no hair like, then select the stronger agent. You got it? That's it from here, you see. Yeah? Do you see you are having chloride in a solution? So that's why at anode, you selected chloride to be having reaction. You form a greenish yellow gas, means your chloride turned into chlorine gas. That's the meaning of it. Okay. But what, what happened at the first electrolytic cell? Your anode is colorless gas. Oil. You have to first remember that copper 2 chloride solution got what ions? You have Cu2 plus, Cl minus, H plus, and OH minus. Where this come from? Water. H plus, OH minus. So in this case here, if it's dilute, 
choose the stronger agent because if you check carefully at the table at the bottom, OH minus and CL minus, according to our six packs table, OH minus is your stronger agent compared to CL minus. So that's why at the first electrolytic cell, you selected OH minus and he formed O2, which is your colorless gas, oxygen gas. You get it? But at cell number two, it's a concentrated. And I told you the reasoning, the condition for concentrated is select halide if got. And the question is chloride. Means got chloride, ma. means got halide ions or not. So you selected CL, even though OH is a stronger agent, but no, concentrated, choose halide. So that's why you selected and you form CL2 at the second cell. You get a point? Can I? Ah, and they never ask you about cathode because cathode, no difference between cell one and cell two. Lah. Ah, cathode still always choose your stronger agent. But in this case, they are not asking for cathode. They are only asking for anode. So your first answer here is cell one. Okay, you release oxygen gas. Okay, the colorless gas release is oxygen gas. Why? Because you actually selected hydroxide uh, because the standard electron potential value is less positive compared to the value for Cl minus. Okay, and your OH minus will lose four electrons to actually form oxygen molecule and water. But that's for cell one. So for cell two, you can see that you form greenish yellow gas, okay, which is a chlorine gas. Uh, so you selected chlorine because concentration of chloride is higher. So you see, yeah, the first one is because the value, the value is less positive, means the, the stronger agent. Ah. But the second cell, you are actually selecting chlorine because of the concentration of chloride is higher than hydroxide. Ah, so you see the, you see the two uh, different reasoning there. Okay. And lastly, cell three, okay, cell three, if you check, it is, it's the same dilute, concent, dilute uh, concentration, but you are using copper as your electron. And guys, if you remember, we revised this last time. When your copper is used as an electrode, since this is your factor number three, because cell one is factor number one, cell two factor number two, which is concentrated. Cell three here, you change your carbon electrode to copper, which is copper is known as your active electrode. What happened to active electrode is immersed into a solution. You will actually have what? You will actually have your air not dissolve. So that's why your air not becomes thinner because your copper is active electrode. It will be dissolving into the solution. Ah, so that's why copper is active electrode. It ionizes and oxidizes to form copper ion at the anode. This only happen, air not dissolve only happen if your electrode is active electrode. Okay, so I hope you guys still have memory about this. Can okay, I moving on? Uh? Okay, one minute. Okay. Okay, one more. Copy you. In cell two, uh, cell three, blue color of copper to chloride remains unchanged. Why? Just now we talk about blue color decrease, blue color increase. Ma. This case is blue color remain unchanged. Because if you remember it, if you check it, you see, uh, at the end, not, uh, cell three end, not, uh, you produce Cu2 plus. And then at the cathode, you actually form, uh, you actually uh, use Cu2 plus. Because if you try to check the equation at here, okay, at the end, not, uh, end not dissolve, uh, Cu becomes Cu2 plus. But at the cathode, uh, you still choose a stronger agent. Uh, means uh, between Cu2 plus and H plus, Cu2 plus is a stronger agent. So you'll be selecting Cu2 plus, receive electron to become back into Cu. So you see, uh, one, you form Cu2 plus. The other side, you use up Cu2 plus. Means you earn 10 ringgit, but you spend 10 ringgit straight away. Ah, so did the solution have increased or decreased of Cu2 plus? No. Ah, so the answer should be the concentration remained the same. So concentration remained the same. Why? Because number one, Rate. rate means speed of your copper ionized to form copper 2 is the same as the rate of copper 2 discharge to form copper atom at the cathode. So guys, two keywords here. Rate means the speed, okay? 
your copper atom ionized means your copper atom become Cu2 plus. Okay, the rate of Cu becomes Cu2 plus is the same as the rate of Cu2 plus turning back into Cu. Ah, you see a difference there? Okay, so because they have the same speed, the Cu2 plus remain the same. Ah, never increase, never decrease. Because once you produce, you use it up. Ah. Okay, Ken? Can the word discharge to copper form at cathode? Can I change the word discharge to copper form at cathode? Copper form at cathode. Because discharge is like ionizes. Hey, no. Ionizes and discharge are totally two different things. They are opposite meaning. Ah, I see. Yeah. What is ionizes? Ionizes means from no charge become charge. This is called ionize. But discharge means from Cu2 plus, you take away the charge, become Cu. They are totally opposite. That's why the keyword here is ionize and discharge. The rate of ionize is the same as rate of discharge. Ah, so don't, don't simply change the word. I must use the same keyword. Okay, I can uh, move on. Uh. Okay, so a uh, the next page actually is the same thing. So I don't want to do that much already. Lah. I uh, really, I don't think I can finish the whole book. <laughs> I'm not seeing hope anymore. E4, 7, a bit hard. Ah. <sighs> Before 9 also a bit hard, I think. Four more hours, even without dinner, I also don't think we can finish. Okay, lah, I will select question, lah, guys. Okay. If really got time, then only I go back. It's okay, Chia can end earlier, then we do the balance later. Ah, can. I will select question again. I try to cover all topics. So for electrolysis, I will cover until here. Then I will do the next one on combination. Ah, so combination is on next next page, page number 39. This one here. Okay, because we, we all know that. Electrolytic cell and voltaic cell that can combine question uh, into one into one cell. Okay, so uh, if you look at this picture here, uh, we have this thing called the combination of electrolytic cell and voltaic cell. And how do I know about this? Uh, okay, so in this case here, we have cell one and cell two. Uh, okay, so of course for here, first thing to find out is find your type of cell. Who is electrolytic? Who is voltaic? Uh, so if you check carefully, they actually give you a hint called cell two supplies electrical energy for cell one. Think about it. Cell two supplies electrical energy. Means what is cell two? What cell supply you electricity? Voltaic. Very good. So cell two should be voltaic. Okay. Cell two should be voltaic. And cell one needs electrical energy to do chemical reaction. Ah, so what cell needs a battery? Electrolytic. So cell one should be electrolytic. Okay, but before I actually start, let me just help you guys to label up everything again. So let's check voltaic first because everything starts from voltaic. Ma. Okay, energy always comes from voltaic cell first. So you have zinc and copper. So according to our agent again, okay, so we see that zinc and copper Zinc is a stronger reducing agent. He will be donating electron. So he will be your reducing agent. Donate electron is basically your negative terminal. We, and we call it anode. Okay, these are all the labeling. So if this guy here is reducing agent, negative terminal, and anode, the other side copper here should be oxidizing agent, positive terminal, and your cathode. Okay. Then what is the label for cell one? Ah, yeah. Their cell one also got carbon and copper. Ma. So if I ask you one thing here, the copper from cell one is connected to copper in cell two, right? What terminal is this copper? What terminal is the copper in cell one? 
Is it positive terminal or is it negative terminal? Mm, because if this is wrong, uh, it will cause a lot of things to not get wrong. Okay, so this terminal is decided by your, you know, in your voltage cell, your terminal is decided by who? Your agent. Okay, but if you talk about electrolytic cell, terminal decided by who? If you imagine electrolytic cell again, you draw, you try to think about electrolytic cell. Electrolytic cell terminal decided by your battery, right? And who is the battery for cell one right now? Cell two. So treat this cell two as a battery. What terminal he have? What terminal he connected? Just follow that. So means the copper in cell one connected to copper in cell two, which is a positive terminal, right? This copper should be a positive terminal. Then carbon connect to zinc is a negative terminal. This is a negative terminal. But I told you, voltaic cell, A minus. Electrolytic cell, is it still A minus? It's A plus. So N not positive terminal, cathode negative terminal. So the one of the way to check is your electron flow must always from N not to cathode. So you see, yeah? electron flow from N not to cathode, and not to cathode. Do you see this is a complete circuit? Then that's a correct labeling. Ah, okay. Can I? So state all the ions present. Before I move on, guys, any question? You see, everything started from where? From the voltage cell, from the battery itself. By deciding your uh, terminals, your agents, okay? Then you know, like, what's the terminal of them, okay? So what are the ions inside here? Okay, your ions having uh, copper 2 sulfate, ma. so Cl2 plus, SO4 to minus, and then solution got water, got H plus, got OH minus. So that's why your answer should be something like this. And state the negative terminal in cell 2. We did that. You can see that our labeling helps a lot. We get the marks here. Zinc should be your answer. Zinc electrode. After 20 minutes, what is the observation at zinc electrode in cell 2? Since zinc will actually donate electron, he will ionize, he will dissolve. So zinc dissolve, what is your observation? The zinc will become thinner, become thicker, like or remain unchanged, okay? You have, to, you have to write something like this. So because zinc, he donate electron, he will actually become thinner, he will actually dissolve. So he dissolve into solution and becomes thinner. Okay, write the equation that occurs at the zinc and copper. Okay, zinc very simple because zinc he will donate electron, become zinc 2 plus. Okay, but who will receive the electron? Ah, the other side. So at here is the copper 2 nitrate solution. So the copper 2, the positive ion of copper, he will receive the electron. And become into copper. Okay, and state the change in color of your copper 2 sulfate in cell 1 and cell 2. Ah, guys, tell me. Cell 2 first, your cell 2 is voltaic cell. Ah. Cell 2, ah, do your blue color, because color of copper 2 is blue, ah, your blue color will actually increase or decrease or remain unchanged. You look at the two equations on your cell 2. One equation is to form Zn2+. plus. Nothing to do with Cu2 plus, right? But the next one is Cu2 plus turn into Cu. You are using up Cu2 plus at one side. So you never produce Cu2 plus, but you use up Cu2 plus. So the color should increase or decrease? Decrease. Very good. Ah, okay. But how about at your uh, cell one? So cell one, what factor do you think this is? Do you see your copper is your anode? When your anode is copper, factor number three. And what is factor number three? Anode dissolve, cathode form the metal. Means copper will dissolve at the anode and you will form copper back at your cathode. So what's the theory there? One side produce Cu2 plus, the other side use up Cu2 plus. So at cell one, your color, your blue color should remain unchanged. Okay, so from here, cell one intensity of blue, uh, remain unchanged, but cell 2 decreases. Okay, so, but I never asked you to explain, uh, so just write that observation should be fine.
Okay, so metal Z is found to contain uh, some impurities. Z is located below copper in the electrochemical series. Okay, there's some, some Z here. Uh. Okay, so state the method that can be used to purify Z. Ah, guys, how do we do purification? It's the same exact theory as factor number three, like electroplating, like purification of metal. Ah, so if you want to collect uh, metal Z, but I don't want the impurities. It's like I have impure copper. What should I do to collect pure copper? Ah, you have to go all the way back to your electrolysis, your purification, put your impure copper at where? Anode. Ah, why? Because anode will dissolve the copper and copper will flow to cathode and form a new copper at the cathode. Ah, so same thing happened as here. If you want to collect Z, ah, what do you do? Put your impure Z at anode. Then you dissolve the Z, it will flow to the other side and form a new Z metal on cathode. And that's how you remove the impurities. So the method very simple, purification of metal. But how do you draw a diagram? Ah, as I said, first you need your setup, battery. Okay. Okay, now we know that the anode is actually uh, the long one. Okay, for terminal, negative terminal cathode. So I'll put them into a solution. Okay, and must label that anode must be impure metal Z. And then cathode must be your pure metal Z. Because later, like after your Z form here, then you can collect more pure metal. Okay. Okay, but of course, your solution, don't worry. Uh, don't, don't miss out. You are dealing with Z. So therefore, I should put Z solution to be exact, Z nitrate solution. Okay, nitrate is not a mass, can be sulfate, can be other ions, can be other negative ion. But the safest one answer is the nitrate. The impure metal no need to fully immerse in the solution. Now. It actually, for purification, now, uh, doesn't really matter immerse or it doesn't immerse or not. Uh, you, just, you are just dealing with dissolving the metal Z. Now. It, for fully immerse, is the electroplating the spoon, that side. Uh, the spoon side, the key side, must fully immerse. Okay, so I'm done with one combination question. And then uh, I have two more combination questions. But I don't do any. <laughs> Sorry, I lost guys. All the combination questions is the same. Well, wow, really the same. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on from combination of question. Oh, you guys want me to do one more? Or oh, you guys feel that like it's okay? Because once you can separate them out, you can know they are actually two separate cells. Uh, you can look at voltaic cell individually. You can look at your uh, electrical, electrolytic cell individually. Ah, uh, okay, no need to get confused on combination or not. Okay, I can, uh, moving on. Uh. Okay, so if you move on, Next one, also combination. Uh, before I go to the next question, I just want to label some, some stuff here. Lah. Okay, so I have, a, looks like a very complicated stuff, but if you look carefully, you see vomiter, you see copper, you see zinc. Ah, then you see here is two carbon electron, obviously guys. Left side is your what cell? What is cell A and B? Where got cell A and B? They got label me? Let's assume left side is A, la, right side is B. La. Did, I, did I see something wrong? No, uh, but they never label A and B, right? Uh, but never mind. So let's say left side is A, A is voltaic cell, B is two carbon electrons, electrolytic cell. Apparatus there got C, is it? Zinc sulfate is your cell A. Uh. Mm, okay, la, you can say so. Okay. So what is the function of porous spot? Ah, son, we haven't done before. Ma. We did salt bridge. Right now. Uh, so what we know is salt, about salt bridge is you actually uh, complete the circuit by allowing it to pass through. But if it's porous spot, he actually did something extra, which is he can separate your solution then at here 
physically, but still allowing ions to pass through. So there are a few keywords for your uh, for your power spot. So to allow movement of ions and complete the circuit. So this is a rational answer. Okay. Uh, what you can do is to separate two solution physically. Okay, so the terminal of the cell, so for cell A, lah, so guys, the terminal, as I said, voltaic cell refer to your electrodes, refer to the table, to your agent. So one is copper, the other one is zinc. Okay, so let me find copper, it's here, zinc, it's here. Choose a strong one. Ah, so top, on the right-hand side, top one is stronger agent. Lah. So zinc will be your reducing agent. Then copper side will be your oxidizing agent. And we know reducing agent, uh, reducing agent is negative terminal, oxidizing agent is positive terminal. Okay, so that's your terminal. So who is your positive terminal of the cell? Copper. Ah, actually answer because electrode, the value, okay, the value of standard electrode potential of copper is more positive, okay, than the value for zinc. Or you can inversely write out the answer. You can say uh, value of zinc is more negative. Uh, here is more positive. Uh. If you write the value, you say zinc is more negative than copper also can. Okay, then the observation at zinc. Uh, so what happened is, if you say zinc is your reducing agent, he is your anode. The keyword for anode is anode dissolve. So guys, anode dissolve uh, can be used at two sides. One is at voltaic cell. Voltaic cell always anode dissolve. Then, when do I use anode dissolve at electrolytic cell? When you are having active electrode in your electrolytic cell. Okay. So what is the observation at zinc? Okay, so your zinc will actually dissolve and becomes thinner. An equation, zinc becomes zinc 2 plus, plus 2e. I think that's all standard stuff. Lah. Okay, if you try to do more questions on the uh, combination of cell, I will say it's kind of simple, okay, because it's repeating. Okay, cell B, uh, cell B uh, is both carbon. Uh. So both carbon means it's not factor 3. Yeah, factor 1, 2, 3. Uh. So factor 3 confirm out here. And then they say it's dilute. Ah, guys. Dilute means factor, which one? Factor number 1. What is the theory on factor number 1? And not cathode both choose the stronger agent. Ah, so what is gas? P collected here. So gas P here, okay, according to our labeling, here is negative terminal. Your P here also negative terminal. So negative terminal means it's actually your uh, cathode at here, at this side. So what is my, uh, wait, uh, let me see. Uh. Okay, wait, did I see wrong? Oh yeah, I see wrong connection. Sorry, guys. So cathode, this is negative terminal. This is positive terminal. This is an anode. This is a cathode. Okay. So at P, it's your anode. So who is an anode? Your N ions. What is your N ions? Got two. Cl minus, OH minus. You select Cl minus if concentrated. But if it's dilute, select OH minus. So if you selected OH minus, you form water. Sorry, you form water and oxygen. So gas P definitely is your oxygen gas. Okay, then label anode cathode. Ah, it's very simple. Lah. I label for you already. The anode cathode. Okay, so no need, no need to do here. Just label on top. Write the half equation at the cathode. Okay, at cathode is a negative terminal. Lah. So cathode got two things. So. Same thing, got two ions. Cu2 plus got and Cl minus. Oh, sorry, Cu2 plus and H plus. The, the two positive ions goes to cathode. So which one should I choose? Stronger one. Uh, so if I check, okay, Cu2 plus and H plus, okay, this is oxidizing agent. Who is a stronger oxidizing agent? The bottom one, Cu2 plus. So you select the Cu2 plus, your equation should be Cu2 plus uh, I, uh, discharge to form Cu. 
u two plus plus two e becomes e. Okay, so after thirty minutes, what is the color change of the copper two chloride? So if you look at the equation at both sides, one is Cu two plus becomes Cu, and here is OH minus becomes into O two ma. So one side totally nothing to do with copper. One side is using up copper two plus. So one side not producing, not doing anything with copper two plus. The other side you use up means overall the Cu two plus is decreasing. So your blue color should decrease. Okay, okay, nah. okay, so now I want to do one question on YouTube. Okay, because actually YouTube is similar to Voltaic cell. So the theory can be exactly the same. Uh, just that you have to try to think in the other way is your agent way. Uh, like who is your reducing agent? Who's your oxidizing agent? What does it do? Uh, it, who oxidize? Who, who reduce? Okay, so let's do one question at page number 42. Okay, guys. Ah, I hope you're all still alive. Huh? Dead. <laughs> what happened to finish the whole book? <laughs> Mission impossible. Barely surviving, but we move on. <laughs> okay, so page number 42. You will see YouTube question. Okay, see, yeah. So YouTube is the same thing, no battery. The whole cell itself is a voltaic cell. It's basically this thing called the, you have this thing called the galvanometer. Okay, yes, your favorite app. Since you say this is your favorite, can you do? <laughs> okay, so we have your acetate hypothesis dichromate 6. We have your iron 2 sulfate. If you guys remember this, what agent do you call these guys? You have, I always ask you guys to specifically me uh, memorize this. Yeah, correct. This SD5 potassium manganese 7 is your oxidizing agent. Means you undergo reduction. How about adenosine? Ah, then this one will be re uh, reducing agent, undergo oxidation. So definitely your Fe2 plus here, yeah, you'll turn into Fe3 plus. Ah, okay. So what is the color change? This. What is the color of Fe2? What is the color of Fe2? Green to brown, very good. So green to brown. Why? Because Fe2 is green, Fe3 is brown. Okay, okay. equation, very simple. Lah. Fe become Fe3, Fe2 plus become 3 plus by donating electrons. Say the change in oxidation number means say the change in charge from 2 plus to 3 plus and to mention the increase or decrease. Okay, So it increases from positive 2 to positive 3. Okay, moving on. Okay, in the other one, uh, uh, type of reaction, simple. Uh, uh, he is the oxidizing agent. Uh, means he will undergo reduction. So what does it do? What's the function of it? It is actually there to act as and what agent? Oxidizing agent. Uh, okay, quite simple, straightforward. Uh. The flow of electron, as I said, flow of electron always flow from the guy that donate to the guy that receive. So oxidation is donate, reduction is receive. So it flow from the iron two side to the dichromate side. Okay, so from the carbon electron in iron two surface solution to the carbon electron in the potassium dichromate six solution through external circuit. External circuit means through the wire. Okay, and lastly, what's the function of function for dilute sulfuric acid? It's a salt bridge. So what does it do? It is there to separate the two agents and to complete the circuit by allowing ions to move. Eyes. separate them physically, uh, complete the circuit by allowing ions to pass through it. So this is very similar to porous pot. Uh, because usually, uh, salt bridge, uh, you don't have to write this. Salt bridge, you don't need to write one. Uh, because salt bridge is too bigger, then you have a bridge in between them. Uh. 
That one, you don't need to separate them physically because it's already separated by Beaker. But in YouTube and PowerSpot, they are actually solution in the same setup, but you use PowerSpot and this dilute sulfuric acid to separate them physically. Ah, so since we have uh, acidified potassium chromate 6 as your oxidizing agent, give me another chemical that is also an oxidizing agent. Ah, what's the best friend of acidified potassium dichromate? We have the acidified potassium manganate 7. Ah, bromine water also can, yes. Bromine water also good. Okay, bromine water also can. Ah. Ah. So this is YouTube. Okay, then I want to do one rusting. The rusting actually we did we do before in our before our class in March, right? I'll just do one. Okay. Okay, I'll give you guys one minute. Yeah, hey, give Esmond the link to join the class. Uh. He never see the link. Eh. You never even see my message. What happened to Esmen? He gave up on chemistry. Yeah? He really planned to watch recording video. Wow, GG. <laughs> watch the whole night, man. Okay, so... Uh, Let's do one uh, rusting, huh? Okay. Who is Aspen? Nitilish, I like your question. <laughs> okay, page number 44. This one here, rusting here, page number 44. Okay, so we are actually having this uh, hot jelly, and you guys actually remember this. I, I hope you guys remember. We have this uh, indicators, potassium hexa cyanophorate 3. We have your phenolphthalein to actually uh, to test the presence of who? So F, uh, this iron hexafluoride three is actually to test the presence of Fe two plus. The phenolphthalein is to test the presence of OH minus. Okay, clear. Huh? So for number one, you see dark blue color form means some uh, means your iron actually rusted. So what is metal R? So when you see iron nail uh, coil with other metals, huh, there's only two possible po possibilities. Either your iron nail rust faster, or you can protect your iron nail from rusting. So for here, you see dark blue color. Ma. The dark blue color comes from Fe2+. Here, this one prov proof that you have Fe2+, means that iron nail now rust faster. So metal R makes your iron nail rust faster. What is metal R? So metal R should be a metal that is less reactive than iron. So it can be copper, it can be silver, okay? Possible answer lah. Then metal S coil around iron nail and it protects it from getting rusting. The iron nail like, don't rust. Huh? And you only see pink color. Pink color means got OH minus. And OH minus is actually any metal rust. You also see pink color. Huh? But blue color only Fe2 plus rust. Huh? Then you can see pink color. Uh, you see blue color. So for here, metal S actually protected iron nail from rusting. Iron nail never rust in the second case. So what is the metal S? The metal S should be a metal that is more reactive such as uh, magnesium, such as zinc, aluminium. Okay, that's all possible. Include observation, include half equation, and state the metal that is oxidized. So from our answer here, metal R, S, copper, silver, S is zinc or magnesium. In set one, what happened in set one? Iron is more electron positive than Q. So iron corrode first to form Fe2+. Blue solution shows the presence of Fe2+. Set two, white got pink color. Why no blue color? Because no blue color because no iron rust. Ah, okay. So set two. Okay, so set two from here. Magnesium is one electron positive, so magnesium will corrode first and protect your iron. But he still he still actually corrode because he still donate electron. Ma. So where you get pink color? Because you get OH. Or where you get OH? OH is because of your electron that you donate. And what are the conditions for rusting? Water and oxygen. Ma. So got water, got oxygen, got electron. These three combines, and you will get your OH minus. And the pink color comes from your phenolphthalein detecting OH minus. Uh, and as I said, 
OH minus come from electron, water, oxygen. Ma. So actually, it's not just iron dust. Any metal color ah, also will show you pink color. Ah, eh? But blue color is to prove that only Fe rust. Okay, so that's one question for rusting. I will move on to chapter two. Ah, so guys, you see, ah, finally moving to chapter two. Ah. <laughs> guys, don't die, okay? Don't die, ah. chapter two here. Ah. Ah, almost there, ah. almost there. <laughs> Hand paint already. Okay, one. Then if your bio teacher write together with you, ah, she can do so many questions. Eh? <laughs> can ah? ah? How is that possible? She rap. <laughs> do we have to memorize the equation for OH? Ah, uh, yes, you must have to because definitely either one case in electrolysis you might memorize the, the opposite way. In rusting you have to memorize this way. Ah, uh, if you remember just now I told you when we do electrolysis when you select OH minus like what equation you should form ah. Uh, is it's exactly the same thing here, but the balik. Ah, this is when you select OH minus for electrolysis. Okay, but this is for rusting, but the, the balik. So anyhow, you have to memorize. Ah, so it, if come out in rusting, you can use. Come out in electrolysis, also can use. Okay, so guys, if you are okay, let's move on to carbon compound. So carbon compound, page number 40, number 47. And I page number 47. Huh? Okay, so in page number 47, okay, we have compound X and compound W and then have alcohol Y. So X can turn into W by adding H. And the structural formula for X is this. Ah, air and then eh? Y plus H become compound W. Something is wrong, huh? I think wrong arrow. Ah, uh, yeah, I think wrong arrow. Yes, yes, yes. This arrow should be the other direction. Okay, because it's from alkene plus H only can become alkene. Okay, so now compare and contrast. As I say, guys, compare and contrast always talk about uh, differences and similarities in terms of type of hydrocarbon. So definitely X is your alkene. And then W is your alkene. Okay, so for number one here, so we can see one is saturated, one is unsaturated, contains single bond, the other one contains double bond. Okay, this is the type of hydrocarbons they have and their properties of it. Okay, and what is the physical properties? So usually in compound X, uh, propane, okay, they all have the same. Uh, chemical properties, I, I mean physical properties, because they are both flammable, they are both like low boiling point, low boiling point, they both do not, do not conduct electricity, so they both have same uh, physical properties, okay, because of the weak intermolecular forces. Okay, they are all covalent bonds, but so they all, all have weak metabolic force, weak, weak intermolecular forces. But number three, reaction with bromine, do you think alkane can react with bromine? Ah, alkene, all single bond. Ah. So all single bond means cannot. But alkene got three double bonds, empty spaces, can. Ah, so from here, does not react, react. Okay. Correct, decolorize. Okay, decolorize brown bromine water. Then the brom uh, propane don't decolorize your brown bromine water. Then lastly is combustion, the sootiness of flame. Which one should give you more soot? More soot means like more black smoke. Which one when you burn? Ah? Because they burn, they both give you black smoke. Ma. But one got more black smoke, one got lesser black smoke. How do I know? Depends on the percentage of carbon. Alkene more sooty, correct, because alkene got lesser H. In the other way, you have more ratio of your carbon. Ah, So more soot for propane, less soot for propane, according to the percentage of carbon by mass. Now, draw structural formula for Y 
and name alcohol. Uh, so since that this is actually a propane and propene, propane means 3C, ma. how you turn a propane into alcohol. Alcohol from alkene. Hydration, which say not bad. Huh? What is hydration? By adding H2O, water. Ah, so uh, means H again is, your water is again H and OH. Ma. So H go into one C, OH go into the other C. So your drawing of your alcohol should be something like this. Okay, so you have one OH and one extra H. Okay, one OH, one extra H. The position of OH doesn't really matter. Okay. And they want you to write out the optimal condition. So hydration need 300 degrees Celsius, 60 ATM pressure, and as your uh, phosphoric acid as a catalyst. And the equation involved should be C3H6 plus H2O. You get C3H7OH. Did you a percentage of carbon at propane column typo? Percentage of carbon by mass is or lower, sorry, lower than Y. Thank you. Didn't even realize that. Okay. W. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I assume it's, it's Y. Okay, so the conversion from here, it should be almost the same. Mm, but I will do one general question that can cover up most of the topic in your carbon compound. Okay, I'll do the next one also. Lah, because next one got isomer. I want to do some isomer. Uh, isomer quite important also. Okay, guys, all done. Okay, so moving down, uh, the next question. Uh, so it shows you the conversion of propane. Okay, from propanol, you do reaction one, you get propane, and then propane can become propane. Okay, so what is the functional group for propanol? So propanol is an alcohol. What is the functional group of alcohol? The OH, right? Very good. The name is called hydroxyl. Wow, okay. Seems like this chapter quite easy for you all. Huh? Okay, so draw two isomers for propanol. So what's isomers, guys? Do you remember the definition for isomers? Same what? Different what? Ah, so same chemical, I say same molecular formula, but different structural formula means they have the same amount of C, H, and O, but they draw differently. Ah, so if you draw the first easiest uh, propanol, so it means you're going to have 3C bond to 1H, uh, bond to 1OH, and the rest bond to 7H. This is the first isomer. But what you can do with isomer is you, you actually play along with your functional group. You see now my OH is at the first carbon, right? So if you really want to name this, uh, is it really called propanol? Uh, if you really want to name this, you can you need to put a number in, in between the name. You can call this a uh, propan one all or what prop. Uh, some of you can say, teacher, I thought it's prop one and all. Uh, it's up to you, right? Like, two, two, two ways also can. So the one should exist because to show the position of the C of the OH at the first carbon. But if you move your OH to the second carbon, which is like this. OH here, the rest is H. Ah, then this one uh, is propan 2O. Ah, so the first one is propan 1O, the is propan 2O, which is they have the same number of C, H, and OH, but different arrangement, different drawing. Okay, and what does it undergo to form propene? If you think about it just now, propene to propanol. Alkene to alcohol is hydration. Now you want to reverse the process. Dehydration. Very good. Okay. Write the equation from your propanol, which is C3H7OH. Take away water, become C3H6 with H2O. 
Ah, so no need balance. It's, it's already balanced. Okay, now if you have propane and propene, compare the observation when you actually add acidified potassium manganese 7. And this is also another way to test your alkene and alkene kind of. Ah, because the one of the way to test alkene alkene is bromine. Ma. The other way is by using this. How I know it's alkene alkene? This acidified potassium manganese 7, it is, or it is actually purple color. If he actually become colorless, alkene. If it's purple, remain purple, alkene. Ah, so I would say this one very similar to your bromine question. So I will just leave the answer here. Okay, so uh, is it propene? Uh, it's flow into, wow, so long. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Hey. Oi. <laughs> YouTube live, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. So purple color of acidified k 4 becomes colorless because it's propene. But propene, purple color remain unchanged. Why? Because propene can undergo addition, but propane cannot undergo addition due to saturated and unsaturated. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about this a little bit. Okay, next one, you see... Uh, Kevin sold apple cookies as shown in Diagram 3.2 during last Christmas. Wow, so many stories here. He wants to expand his business, but it's none of my business. Okay. He does not have enough apples. He plans to use an apple flavor to produce apple cookies. So the chemical formula for apple flavor is C4H9COOC2H5. As a chemistry people help Kelvin to name two carbon compounds that can be used to produce the apple flavor. Ah, so what is this, guys? The COO in the middle. What homologous series is this? What group is this? Correct. This is actually ester. Yes. Okay. But they want you to name the two carbon compounds to produce ester. Makana. So what are the two carbon compounds? Carboxylic acid and alcohol. Means you have to do the, the reverse esterification. Now. Esterification is to produce the, the ester. Here, the balik, they want you to name the two compounds that can form the ester. Ah, so it all started off from here. C4H9, COO, C2H5. Okay, you must break this down. Where to break that? Break the COO. So you break the COO. One is C4H9, COOH. The other one is C2H5, OH. Do you see carboxylic acid? Do you see OH? Ah, so what do you call C4H9COH, guys? C4, do you call this butanoic acid? Because it's ethanoic acid. Ma. So a 4C usually is start with B-U-T. So you all usually name this as butanoic acid. Ah, so at here, leh, is actually, isn't the O break at the middle? Isn't the isn't break at the middle of the 2O? It ah, doesn't really matter, actually. <laughs> Either one you break, uh, you still have COOH and OH. Ma. Uh, but what do you name this? How do you name this? Is it butanoic acid? If you put butanoic acid, uh, wrong. Uh, why? Le? C4 is not wrong. Uh, but you have one more C at the back. So it's actually total 5C. So this guy here should be pentanoic acid and 2C alcohol. Ethanol. Okay, so some extra hot question here. Even though it's a very little marks, maybe it's just like one to two marks here. But you have to go the reverse way. Okay. Okay, guys, all done. Moving on. Huh? Okay, I do one more question on uh, carbon compound. Huh? Okay, because carbon compound also like to ask you flow chart. Okay, so now you have C4H, uh, C6H14. Uh, you have this cracking reaction. So cracking reaction means you break your long chain uh, alkene into alkene and alkene. 
mean you break it into smaller parts. Lah. So when you break it, it becomes ethane and butene. And then reaction, crack, you crack again, become compound A and gas X. Then for butene, then you do reaction two, become butanol. Butanol can back into butene. This one we learned before just now. Alkene to alcohol, hydration. Go back, dehydration. But you can turn your alcohol back into uh, in, uh, true reaction tree, into compound B, where B can plus alcohol to get you C. Ah, so let me just try to answer all these unknowns first. What you all think is B, butanol become compound B. Ah, alcohol, you can turn it into, all right, butanoic acid. Very good, butanoic acid. Then butanoic acid can plus ethanol to keep become, what is this? C is what? C should be ester. Ah, but the name, later we name lah. Okay, the name is, you have exact name for it. Then you have ethane that can actually do cracking reaction to get you A and gas X. Okay, this one maybe you say, teacher, I'm not sure about this. Never mind. Let's move on. Yeah. Identify uh, A, B, and gas. Oh, cannot, cannot, never mind. <laughs> so B, we know it. B is butanoic acid. Then A is what? A, A if you crack, uh, is ethane. Okay, ethane, uh, correct. Uh. So ethane is C2H6 at this. If you do more cracking, oh, something's uh, not right. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, the only thing you can crack right now is can you crack like left with one small C? Ah, cannot, cannot. Okay, because if you crack, uh, then it become like uh, you don't form a gas. So, which what do you crack? Uh, then you can get A and gas. Very good, good gas. What you do is cracking can also crack two H come out. So this, when you crack 2H come out, you remove 2H. This is what? This is ethene. Ah, so H can be ethene. And you take out the 2H, become gas X. Obviously, gas X is hydrogen gas. Ah, so usually to the teacher, I thought this one like uh, dehydration. Uh, so actually, basically when you remove, you actually break stuff into smaller pieces. We call them cracking. Okay, I can I? So, <clears throat> so A is, <clears throat> sorry guys, I'm losing my voice. So A, ethene, B, butanoic acid, X is hydrogen gas. Okay, name reaction one. Reaction one is where? Reaction one is here. Ah, you go backwards from alcohol back to alkene. So it's removing water. So it should be dehydration and equation should be quite simple. Take away the water, become, uh, take away H2O, the left O is your answer. Okay, reaction four converts alcohol into carboxylic acid. Okay, no more. Converts alcohol into carboxylic That one is reaction three, ma. I think this one right wrong. Okay, reaction three converts alcohol into carboxylic acid. State the reagent used in reaction four. Okay, four again. Crazy. Uh, reaction three. So, what is the chemical that you add to turn alcohol into carboxylic acid? So, the difference between alcohol is what? Alcohol functional group is OH. Carboxylic acid functional group is COOH. What's the extra thing there? The O, right? Ah, so this is actually an oxidation process. Since this is oxidation, what agent do we add? Oxidizing agent. You get it? I add oxidizing agent so that this agent can oxidize the chemical that I want. So what can I put? Yes, acidify potassium magnesium 7, acidify potassium dichromate 6, it's up to you. Okay. Then write the chemical equation to form C. Ah, this is a bit hard. Ah, you first you need to know what's butanoic acid. So butanoic acid is C3H7COOH. Butanoic acid. Okay, don't forget one C at the back. Ah. Plus the alcohol at the other side is ethanol. Ethanol is C2H7OH. So to form ester, guys, what do you remove? You remove H and OH. Ah, okay. 
Either, either way lah. Okay. H, H5. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I go too fast. C2H5OH. Okay. You remove H and OH. You left with CH, C3, H7, COO, where this O, this second O comes from here. And then here, C2H5. And don't forget your side product is water because you remove H and OH to form your ester. And draw two isomers for butanol. Same thing for carbon with a OH at different position. So I'll say this is kind of simple. Okay, guys. Whoa. We are at chapter three here. After this one. I see finish the whole book. What time? Uh? What's the chemical formula for S85 potassium magnesium 7? Ah, see for KDR. Uh? It's KMNO4. Then the dichromate is K2Cr2O7. Okay, so now if you move on, all right, nice. Can okay, I? Ah, so carbon compound, I would say not very hard, lah, but a little, a little bit long. Okay. Then if you actually. <laughs> Wait. Bungi cannot tahan in she left. <laughs> okay, lah, guys. I believe most of you guys here cannot tahan in except for those who just joined afternoon class. Lah. Okay, I'll try to finish off the remaining chapters questions. Okay, so for chapter three, it's actually your uh, heat of reaction. Okay, you have four heat of reaction: heat of displacement, heat of precipitation, heat of combustion, heat of neutralization. Okay, so uh, I actually also cannot brain a little bit. Uh. <laughs> I I am actually talking without using my brain. I'm so sorry. <laughs> if I say wrong anything, please let me know. Uh. Okay, so. Uh, we have the values given. This is actually heat of neutralization, which is your acid plus alkaline. So, teacher, will you post the answer in GC? Definitely, don't worry about that. I'll post the answer into Google Classroom. Okay, don't worry about that. Okay, then, uh, what's the meaning, guys? When you try to define some heat, always start with the five keywords. Uh, it's about what? It's the heat change when one more of something. So what is the keyword for neutralization? Is acid plus alkaline, right? But what is the important ion in acid? H plus. What's the important ion in alkaline? OH minus. So means your answer here should be one more of H plus react with one more of OH minus to form one more of water. So the heat change when one more of water is formed from the reaction between an acid and alkaline. This one very simple, okay? So if you want to be more uh, detailed, is it between one mole of H plus and one mole of OH minus? Okay, so then based on this table, state one observation can be deduced from the values of heat of neutralization when sodium hydroxide reacts with the acid and explain your answer. So from here, sodium hydroxide and ethanol acid give you negative 53.7 uh, kilojoule per mole. While you use a different acid, it gives you a higher heat of neutralization. What do you understand from here? You understand that this should be exothermic, ma, number one, because they are both negative sign. They are all negative uh, exothermic reaction. Okay. But they never ask you about the which acid. La. So you can just say uh, your thermometer reading increase. Okay. And explain the answer because this is exothermic reaction. So term thermometer reading increases. Because it is an exothermic reaction that releases heat to surround it. Okay, then next one only they ask you why you got difference in your neutralization. Still heat of neutralization, but one why more, why, why one lesser. Ah, so definitely from here is because of the acid. So we see ah, what is ethanol acid, what is hydrochloric acid, strong and weak acid, very good. So definition again, 
Strong means ionizes is completely to give you more H plus. Weak is ionized partially to give you lesser H plus. So if it's about weak, uh, why weak got lesser heat release? Eh? Ah, because some of the heat uh, is used by this ethanoic acid because he's ionized partially. Ma. He absorbs some heat to manually ionize himself. He used heat to manu manually ionize. That's why he released lesser heat. He used a little bit of heat. While strong acid, strong alkaline, they memang ionizes completely. They no need to absorb heat to do stuff. They all release out. Okay, that's why for answer here. The keyword for here is some heat release is used to ionize the acid completely in water. Ah, but the first two answer is similar to the acid definition. Ah. And draw energy level diagram, guys. So for energy level diagram, what I mentioned here, energy level diagram is actually uh, to show that it's is it exothermic or anothermic is high to low or low to high. So if it's exothermic, is it high to low or low to high? Exothermic, high to low. Huh? All right. And don't forget to put in all the equation and all in all, all your uh, the delta H. Okay, so you can get something like this. Okay, don't forget to put in your, your labeling. Okay, then in this topic, you have some calculation here. Ah, but guys, do you remember all the formulas that you need in this, in this topic? The formulas you need is what? Q equals to mc theta. And then number of mole equals to some formulas. Uh, usually it's mv over 1000 because you have multiple uh, number of mole calculation. Lastly is delta h. How to find delta h? Take your Q, divide your number of mole. Yeah, nah? So I'll do once. Okay, so I have here, I have volume, I have concentration, that's MV, added to another M and another V, okay, and then calculate the temperature change. What is temperature change, guys? The delta, I think, the theta, okay? Ah, but the thing is, if you want to do, if you want to find this theta, first you need to find Q. Do you have Q? Don't have. But how to find Q? There's another formula with Q which is delta H. Do you have delta H? Yes, but to use delta H with number of mole, only you can find Q. Ma. So you need to find number of mole first. No? So at the end of the day, number of mole is the first thing you have to find. Ah, okay. So you have two number of mole to find here. Which one should I use? Use both. Do both and use the smaller one. Okay, so if you do for both, number of mole of, the first one is HCl, is mv over 1000, mv over 1000 is actually 0 0.1 mole. The other one is also number of mole, but this is, an, this is for uh, sodium hydroxide, NaOH. Also mv over 1000, okay, it's also 0 0.1 mole. So since they have the same number of mole and the ratio is one to one, use either one. Ah, okay, use either one, ah. Huh? So since I my number of mole, I can use either one side. I can try to start my formula. So delta H equals to Q over number of mole. So delta H between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid is 57.3 kilojoule per mole. So I will be 57,300. Okay. Equals to Q, I don't know. Number of mole is 0 0.1. So guys, what is Q? Bring your 0 0.1 over, multiply the number there, you will get 5,730 joule. But that's not the answer. You want to find theta. So Q equals to MC theta. So Q is 5,730. What is mass, guys? Mass is actually equals to volume. Why? Because density is equals to one. Uh, if you all forgot, technically, in chemistry, mass, just use your volume, assume as mass. Okay, uh, because as equals to one means your mass equals to volume. So do I use 100, guys, as your N? Uh, you are pouring two different solutions together. Total volume is 100 plus 100. So it should be 200 K. And the C is given by question. So find theta. Ah, so your theta equals to, come guys, 6. 8, 2. 
uh, 6.82 watt. Okay, because the thermometer only can measure uh, one decimal place. So it's best to put one decimal place. If you put 6.82, uh, teacher might give you wrong. Even though it's from calculation. Uh. Ah, so you must put your decimal place according to the maximum your maximum maximum that your apparatus can measure. Okay, so this is heat of neutralization. Okay, uh, some of you might need to go already. Okay, can guys? Okay, uh, all the best in SPM. Okay, uh, I will be continuing and try to finish uh, at least one question for each chapter. Okay, for those who want to stay, you can stay. Those who want to leave, all the best in SPM. I'll see you if you text me. <laughs> Let me know the result, okay? Uh, okay, can I? Okay. So moving on, going down, uh, okay, this one also uh, neutralization, so I don't do it, it's the same thing. Okay, Keshav shall first, can I do Okay, bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye, Suji, bye, Keshav, okay, bye-bye. When will this class really end? Until I finish one question each chapter. Uh, I'm chapter three, Dima, almost there. We have five chapters in from five. <laughs> okay, okay, I can, uh. Okay, then I will skip the next one because it's also neutralization. So I'm going to do next next one, which is page number 52. Okay, in page number 52, we are actually looking at heat of combustion. Okay, heat of combustion got slightly different there because your heat is not directly into your uh, chemical. Okay, because you're actually burning your fuel to produce heat and that heat will send into your uh, water buff. Okay, can I? Uh, so usually when you measure heat of combustion, uh, you cannot measure the heat of the fire. You get a point? You cannot measure the heat of the, uh, the fuel. So what we can do is, uh, in all the heat uh, reaction, usually we use like polystyrene cup. We have this uh, polystyrene cup to reduce heat loss of surrounding. Uh, except for heat of combustion, you use metal container. Because this experiment, uh, you must actually transfer the heat faster to, into the water, then only your thermometer can get the heat uh, faster. Uh, if you use polystyrene cup or you use some beaker here, uh, the heat might at being absorbed by the container. Then your thermometer never get heat. Uh, the result is not accurate. Okay, so that's why for this heat of combustion, it will be slightly different from other heat. Other heat always uh, polystyrene cup, polystyrene cup, polystyrene cup to reduce heat loss surrounding. This one is metal container. But with metal container, uh, he also can release heat fast. Uh, means the heat can might go outside. So usually you have this windshield. Uh, means on the left and right side of here, you have this windshield to actually uh, block the air flowing to reduce heat loss of surrounding. Uh, so some extra information here. Uh. So name the product when ethanol is burned. So when you burn alcohol, guys, what do you form? Burn alcohol, it's a complete combustion. So complete combustion means you only form two products, CO2, H2O. Ah, very good. Carbon dioxide and water. Give the above chemical reaction, a chemical equation. So ethanol is C2H5OH. Ah, burning, guys. Ah, just now burning, I told you, ah, when should I add O2 or when should I not add O2? This question, do you think you need to put O2? Ah, it's a burning. You are burning that, out, that fuel. So definitely you have to put O2 into the equation. Okay. Unless it's a Bunsen burner. Bunsen burner, then no need. Okay. So add this thing to it, you get CO2 and H2O. And don't forget the balance equation. Okay. Now, assuming heat is not absorbed by the container and the atmosphere, means what is the meaning of this? Means no heat loss of surrounding. This is what we always assume in uh, in high school science, in physics also, okay? Determine the heat in Joule that released when 0.23 gram of ethanol is burned. So to actually calculate uh, heat in Joule means to find Q. Uh, how to find Q? Q equals to mc theta. The mass, should I use the mass of the alcohol? No, uh, because heat is measured by what? You are measuring the heat of the water. So what you're going to do? 
use the mass of the water instead of the mass of alcohol. Then you're going to be like, teacher, then what's the point of giving us this mass of alcohol? It's useful because that will be used in your number of more calculations. Ah, okay. So for here, the water is 100 gram. C is 4.2. Okay. They never give you C, but never mind C always 4.21. Then the temperature is actually increases by 16 degrees Celsius. So theta is 16 straight away. So you should get 6720 Joule. Okay, thank you. Okay. Ah. Then how to find number of mole? I have mass. I can take mass over molar mass. Ah, okay. So from here, number of mole equals to mass over molar mass. So mass 0 0.23. Molar mass of alcohol is technically, uh, teacher, do we need to draw the triangle under the arrow for B? Oh, no need, no need. Usually triangle means uh, heating, means decomposition. With the one with oxygen, no need to put triangle. Ah, yeah. But actually no need to put. Uh, that one, don't need to put. We yeah, don't struggle there. So what's the molar mass of alcohol? So alcohol is C2H5OH. Ma. So total up together yourself. C2, so 12 times 2. H5, uh, actually 6 la, because there's another H at the back. Ma. So actually total H6. So I can say 1 times 6 plus 1 O. Uh, then you do your math. La. Okay, so 24 plus 6, 30, 46. So 0 0.23 over 46. It goes to every five. How many is zero? Zero point zero zero five. Okay, thank you. Uh, means uh, in this experiment, zero point zero zero five more can release six thousand seven hundred twenty joule of heat energy. And lastly, to calculate heat of combustion, that's your delta H. So delta H is equals to Q over number of mole. So 6720 over 0 0.005. You should get a very big value. Convert it to kilojoule. So it's 1344 kilojoule per mole. Don't forget the word per mole. Huh? Ah, and don't forget, it's an exothermic reaction. What do you need to add? A negative sign. OK, so when we talk about combustion, it's when one mole of your fuel at here is alcohol or ethanol is burned completely to produce your carbon dioxide and oxygen that's a heat that's a heat that from from this reaction so the definition always start with these five words heat change when one more uh, so heat change or you can see here is heat release huh? heat release when one more of alcohol here is ethanol is completely burned in excess oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water so, but if you stop here, should should be fine also lah. Okay, moving on. Heat of combustion of ethanol produced based on this experiment is smaller than the value based on theory. Give two reason. Means the value you calculate from here. You compare to your real life experiment. You should get lesser. Why? Because what we assume is heat is not absorbed by the metal container and the atmosphere. But is this true in real life? No. Ah, your container will absorb a bit. Your atmosphere will also absorb a bit. So some heat never go to thermometer. Ah, so from here, some heat is absorbed by the wire gauze and heat loss is surrounding. Okay. And lastly, say two safety precautions to increase accuracy of this experiment. So we can put windshield. Okay. And then we actually take away the wire gauze. Ah, because wire gauze usually is to avoid burning your glassware. Ma. But this, since this is a metal container, take away the metal, uh, the wire gauze. Uh, direct heat the, the metal container. And energy level diagram is still exothermic, still high to low. But of course, don't forget to put in your equation and the delta H. Delta H is calculated here. So we put this value into it. Should be something like this.
Okay, guys, can I move on? Still alive, huh? Still alive, huh? I feel like my 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 throat is screaming for help. Like, brother, stop talking. <laughs> Hi. Okay. So, uh, okay. Next one is still heat of combustion. So I'm not gonna do actually do this. I guess is almost the same thing. Drink honey water. I almost any lah. Never mind lah. <laughs> Okay. Move on. Then you will see chapter four. Ha. We are chapter four ni ha. Okay, so we have situation A, situation B with latex uh, plus coagulant. The other one is latex with anticoagulant. So we know that latex is the raw uh, rubber. Kinda. So, and your latex can actually have two conditions, can actually become a solid. We call it coagulation. You can prevent it from solid. Uh, you can prevent coagulation. So suggest a name to, for a suitable coagulant to speed up the coagulation latex and describe the process of involved. Of oh, this coagulation involved. Okay. Oh my God, I can see the end finally. <laughs> Since 9 a.m. until now. Ah, it rarely break less than one hour. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, what are the stuff to make sure your latex can coagulate faster? If you think about it, latex coagulate due to what? Due to acid. Correct. The acid bacteria on air. Ma. So, if you want to make it coagulate faster, Add acid. Okay, so if you want to add anticoagulant, okay, alkaline. And how do you do this coagulation? So in latex, the rubber particles are usually surrounded by what? They are surrounded by negative charge. So when you add acid, okay, the membrane, ah, correct, the membrane with negative charge, that's correct. Ah, so when you add acid, oh, acid is positive charge. Ma. So the positive charge neutralizes the negative charge membrane. So the membrane become no charge. So when the membrane no charge, he collide with other rubber particles and he break the membrane and the rubber particles inside, actually call, uh, uh, we call it the come together. When they come together, he coagulate. So the answer should be something like this. So hydrogen ions in acid neutralize the negatively charged protein membrane of the rubber particles. Okay, so the rubber particles will collide with one another and break the protein membrane. Eventually, it will clump with one another resulting in uh, coagulation. What if I wrote hydrochloric acid? Uh, hydrochloric acid cannot, because coagulate, coagulant uh, must be weak acid. If you pour strong acid, uh, eh, you corrode your red latex. <laughs> uh, so must be weak acid. Okay, latex needs to be delivered to the factory to produce surgical glove. As a rubber plantation manager, which situation in table 10 is most suitable to be used for delivery of latex? So surgical glove, uh, do you want it to be solid? I want it to be like elastic, correct? I want it to be liquid state before even he reached the factory. So during the delivery process, I don't want it to actually coagulate. So I should add the anticoagulant. Ah, so I should actually do situation B, justify your choice. Ah, because I wanted to keep it as liquid. So when you go to the factory, it can be used to turn into the elastic surgical glove. If it's solid, ah, it's not elastic anymore. Ah, okay. So from here, anticoagulant contains hydroxide, where you will actually uh, pro uh, neutralize the bacteria. So the protein membrane can remain the negative charge. Rubber particles still repel each other. It remains in liquid form. Okay, can I? So this will be latex coagulation process. It's kind of common. And you, I believe you all did quite a lot of questions here. Okay, I can I? So, finishing my water. Feeling my throat very pain, really. Yeah, moving on. Huh? So, guys, next page. Huh? Okay, next one is also on rubber. Okay, but this one a bit special is because rubber, they might ask you some 
hard question. So Malaysian rubber products search a record of 41 billion in 2020 due to high demand of exports of your medical gloves. Okay, you know, top glove, okay, you know, like Supermax, okay. I don't know whether you all know that so these are the factories, companies that produce gloves. So one of the major components making gloves is natural rubber. State the name the monomer of natural rubber. Do you guys remember the monomer of natural rubber? Ah, don't tell me latex, ah. Latex is polymer. Yeah. Hey, what is the monomer of rubber? Confirm forgot already, right? Hey, hey, hey. So the monomer is called isoprene. Totally no idea what's this, right? <laughs> okay. This is actually some of the very minor exam question. So just in case you totally knew it, sure. You're waiting for me to give you answers so that you give me chance for that. Ah, give me a chance to answer. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so now we have our latex. Okay, it can remain as liquid, it can coagulate. So suggest the answer didn't erase in the book, is it? Oh, maybe that's why. <laughs> okay, so what can cause the difference in the condition here? So guys, as I said again, how do you remain as liquid? Add alkaline. How do you make it coagulate? Add acid. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I don't do this yeah. Okay, it's the same thing, okay? So I'm just gonna move on. Okay, it's the same as just now. Okay, moving on, you have uh rubber users because once you produce rubber, you can use it in other places. So uh suggest a substance that should be added in process one to ensure latex remain the form of liquid. So this one we know uh, at alkaline. Uh, then state the name of type A rubber and type B rubber. So type A is the rubber strip. Okay, you use it to do rubber band. Then you make type A by soaking it into disulfur dichloride in methyl benzene. Guys, do you remember what is this process? A normal rubber strip, a natural rubber can be strengthened by adding this thing here. Vulcanization, very good. So this is actually called vulcanization. So A is unvulcanized rubber, B is vulcanized rubber. Okay, so I will say the first one, you're going to add ammonia, with ammonia, okay? Then A is unvulcanized, B is vulcanized. So compare A and B in terms of hardness, elasticity. Okay, who is harder? So definitely Taya and rubber band, who is harder? Obviously vulcanized rubber. Lah, huh? So harder, softer. In elasticity, uh, el as I say, elasticity means that's the tendency for them to return to its original position after you stretch it. Uh, so definitely vulcanized is better. Lah. So more elastic, okay, wait, they never say. Uh, more elastic, less elastic, okay. And then everything about vulcanized is better. Lah. Uh, can we stand high temperature, less easily oxidized, more elastic. This is all everything about vulcanized. So that's why vulcanized is a better rubber that we usually uh, use it in uh, car tires, your shoe sole, okay. Rubber band, all these are no need, no need vulcanized rubber, lah. no point. Okay, so this is vulcanized and unvulcanized. Okay, until here, these are still natural rubber. Like we take natural rubber from the rubber tree, we do make it to do, uh, to make different stuff. Okay, but once you have natural rubber, you have the next one called a synthetic rubber. Ah, so synthetic rubber means man made, lah, human made. So give me three examples of synthetic rubber. Uh, so this one, if you never memorize, GG, GG Sumida. Uh, can you guys even give me one synthetic rubber example? <laughs> eh. Hmm, silicon, hi. Not bad, okay, but then so we call silicon rubber. Uh, PVC, the one called rubber, man. PVC, the one called plastic. Okay, so yes, silicon rubber is one of it. We have two more. The answer is here. Neoprene rubber, SBR, full name styrene butadiene rubber, and silicon rubber. So I will say neoprene and silicon is the two common ones that you always remember. SBR, you all also see it here before, but SBR full name, you all confirm forget. Guarantee. Uh, so if you scared and forget, please write this down. And this is a new syllabus. So as I say, no one knows what's coming out. 
Okay, new syllabus, high chance. What is the name of monomer in new print? So new print is actually having a, a chloroprene. Okay, the word here, chloroprene. Okay, we call it a monomer. Guys, all these are memorization. One. I cannot do anything. I just can give you examples of uh, what's, what, what do we use for neoprene? What do we use for SPR? What do we use for silicon rubber? But I can't help you on the names. You have to memorize. This is like bio. <laughs> okay. Try to blame bio on memorization. Ah, hey, hey. Okay. So draw structure for neoprene. So it's actually chloroprene. So chloroprene means like this. Uh, if you want to draw the diagram, it should be a uh, four carbon. Okay, a four carbon uh, monomorphous. Okay, then you actually, I can't wait till this all over. <laughs> Bio was easier. Offended. <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> Who was that? Ah, uh, Zoe. Ah, Huiling, Huiling finding you. <laughs> Bio hard. Uh, he once say bio hard, once say bio easy. Uh, yeah. Okay. So for structural formula for neoprene, please draw it out. Okay. You guys confirm forget already. At least the terms made sense in bio. Are you sure? Why is the heart called the heart? <laughs> How is this making sense? <laughs> hey, but you see. Ah, propane, alkane with 3C. This name make more sense, right? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I can throw terms at you. It's okay, it's okay. Don't throw my terms at me. Okay, it's okay. La. Hey, hey. okay la. But chemistry, this is the hard part. La. That's why this chapter, as I said, usually students tend to forget and don't care about it. But I force you to write something here. La. At least you have some memories. Okay, I need to throw them somewhere, but please don't throw at me. <laughs> okay, so state three properties of synthetic rubber. So synthetic rubber is usually like, of course, uh, it's even better than uh, vulcanized rubber. Uh, so it's actually more heat resistance, more oxidation resistance, okay, harder, okay, stuff. So resistance to heat, resistance to oxidizing agent, resistance to action from solvents such as acid and alkaline. More elastic can, uh, can, Okay, then there are a few types of synthetic rubber to be used here. As you see, to make your silicon cases, okay, your phone, your car tires. Okay, so usually, uh, so, so you say, teacher, I thought you say tire made of natural rubber. Actually, uh, tire is made of both. Okay, uh, inside, outside, one is natural rubber, one is uh, synthetic rubber. Because they have their own benefit. Ma. So it's something like composite material. You mix two different types of rubber together, and then you can actually get a better metal. Okay, then your plastic bottles here. So name uh, these three types of uh, natural rubber, uh, synthetic rubber here. So for plastic bottles, we call them the neoprene. Okay, highly resistant material. Okay, more, more than natural rubber to water. More than natural rubber to water. What, what, what's it? What's it? Huh? What, what real sentence is this? I will say maybe more insoluble, I guess. Okay, means that uh, it is waterproof. Lah. Okay, flexible over wide range. Natural rubber is suddenly good for plants. <laughs> no lah. Okay, this one is about water solubility. Never, never. <laughs> to make a uh, hose of petrol, petrol hose. Then for the next one is your car tire. Car tire and your shoe sole usually, usually use the same one. We call it the SPR. So shoe sole also SPR, car tire also SPR. So good abrasion resistance means like shock resistance. You apply big momentum, big force to it. It, uh, it can absorb all the impact. Ah, so, and also good aging stability to make uh, mechanical goods, automotive parts, okay, shoe sole, you see. Uh, lastly, silicon case, silicon rubber. Okay, it's actually better heat resistance. Okay, and then also uh, make good use of your medical application. So we use rubber in your medical tubes, okay, medical machines, tubes, and stuff. 
Okay, as I say, guys, these are all memorization. I come, I can't help you that much. Okay. Uh, then for synthetic rubber, uh, I want to do a little bit on vulcanization because we just now mentioned vulcanization, but we never like explain what's vulcanization. So I want to do one process on vulcanization is actually at page number 59. Can we write short form as SBR? Uh, SBR for here, guys, as, uh, this thing here, not sure uh, because new syllabus. Ma. So if you actually write SBR, you give a chance to teacher to minus your marks just in case. La. So you better write the full name. Uh, mm -hmm. But in, in uni, okay, in, when I learned last time in uni, SBR is acceptable. Uh, like, let, let me write SBR teacher note, it's actually styrene butadiene. Okay. C bio BTR can write short form. Oh, now you want to compare, huh? Ah, SPR also can cannot lose. Chemistry cannot lose. Nah, nah, just kidding. Uh, just kidding. Okay. So this SPR actually should be generally acceptable. Okay, but as I said, I don't want to be the risk taker. Okay. Let's take in the full name. But if you if you forgot, put SPR as yes, your last resort. Okay, moving on. Okay, I want to do, as I said, on the vulcanization, right? So vulcanization, I want to flip, 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 uh, just on page number 59. Okay, this one also something very crazy. You all never learn this. So if this one come out, give up, give in the one mark. Uh, but actually, this is a stru uh, structural formula for the monomer of natural rubber. It's the isoprene. Okay, but the full name for isoprene uh, is this. 2-methyl. Okay, this one, the tail can be H and uh, the material you can use the normal spelling M E T H Y L. Okay, two methyl but one three diena. Okay, so this one, eh, if you never memorize, you lose this one mark easily. And it's just one mark, and it's not compulsory coming out in the exam, right? And it's low chance. The higher chance for here is actually the process to strengthen your natural rubber. What do we call the process again, guys? We call them the vulcanization. And what is vulcanization? You actually put what? You actually build what? You put you build all this sulfur cross link. That's a keyword. You actually build sulfur cross link in between your rubber molecules, and when when they are connected, they become stronger. They don't slide over each other. They improve elasticity, become harder and stuff. So from here, the presence of sulfur cross link. Ah, so so methyl or methyl? Sorry, didn't hear. Both can. Right, the normal methyl also can. So the sulfur crossing between rubber molecules, and then this sulfur crossing uh, enable them to do what? It will pull the chain back to their original position. So when vulcanized rubber is stretched and released, making it more elastic. Means you pull, they will actually uh, stretch, ma. Uh, but the sulfur crossing will pull them back. Okay, Then they will actually go back to their original position. And definitely, the two properties from here, more heat resistance, more oxidation resistance. Okay, and guys, the last two questions. <laughs> Chapter five, soap and detergent. Are you all ready? Hand gone already. <laughs> no, ah, ah, no, means I gonna, I gonna delay here. So you end later. <laughs> ah, you wanna end later or end earlier? Haven't copy finish. Okay lah. Okay, so guys, uh, oh, I cannot imagine do until nine pm. Oh, I gonna die. Man. Okay, so next one is also SBR. La, so synthetic rubber, man-made rubber. Okay? So uh, chapter number five, we actually have this topic on 
soap and detergent usually also have the uh, your medications and stuff, okay? As I said, this book is selected questions, okay? So, okay, so for this case here, we actually have some cleansing agent, cleaning agent A and cleaning agent B on grease stain in soft and hot water. Uh, so guys, do you remember what's hot water? Hot water is water that contains some specific ions. What are the two ions? Calcium and and magnesium, yeah, correct. <laughs> okay, uh, saponification, uh, yes, the process to produce soap, saponification, okay. So uh, in this case here, we have A and B, uh, so soft water, uh, hot water, it is soft water, one and two soft water, and then three and four is hot water. Uh. So grease stain removed in one, two, three, but remain at number four. So, what do you think agent A is? <coughs> A is able to remove the grease stain in both soft and hot water. So A should be a more efficient, effective cleaning agent, detergent, correct. Then B is not working in hot water. So B should be soap, okay? So now, identify them and which one is more effective. Explain them in 10 marks between one and two. So one and two is basically A and B in, hot, in soft water, right? So first thing we know, A is detergent, B is uh, soap. You get too much from there already. Uh, but soft water actually don't have any specific ions, right? So it means soap and detergent is able to fully dissolve in your soft water. But the grease stain remain in B for hot water. Beside having grease stain remain, what are the extra things you might form? If you put soap in hot water, what do you form? You form insoluble salt known as scum. Very good. Okay, so therefore from here, okay, we have we say I uh, explain. Action one and two, okay, A and B are effective in soft water. Why? Because soft water don't have magnesium, don't have calcium. Okay, they can dissolve in soft water. Okay, then three and four, uh, hot water got what? Got calcium and magnesium. So because of these two, uh, your soap will form precipitate, which is scum. Okay, uh, form precipitate slash scum. Uh. So this is a slash. Uh. Okay, so when reacting with magnesium or calcium ions. Okay, but A, uh, detergent don't really care. Uh, magnesium also never mind, calcium also never mind. He's still, fall, he's still able to dissolve. Uh, so therefore, A is detergent, B is soap. And at the end of the day, a is more effective than B. 10 marks. Ah, I will say it's not that hard to get 10 marks, but you have to be more uh, specific. You have to write all the details inside here. Soft water don't have magnesium, don't have calcium, okay? But detergent is not biodegradable. Yes, correct. Detergent, even though it's more effective, but it's not environmental friendly, detergent causes more uh, pollution. Or both not biodegradable. No, no, soap is biodegradable. Ah, the soap you are using in daily life, okay? You are actually biodegradable. Okay, so give you two minutes, finish the whole thing. So what is a chem for vulcanization? What's a chem? What do you mean, what's the chem? Mm, if you talk about chemical equation, there wouldn't be any chemical equation. Okay, you just have to know that uh, sulfur crossing is in between your rubber particles. Okay, guys, can move on. Last question though. <laughs> Time to celebrate. Okay, so guys, later on, I'll post the answer into Google Classroom. So uh, the rest that you guys never do, please finish it, okay? 
And don't forget to finish part one and part three, which is the video and notes answer all provided in Google Classroom. Okay, that's all where you get all the, the describe experiments, okay, and stuff. Okay, I'll move on. Huh? Okay, so next one is basically the soap preparation process. Ah, so someone gave me this now, but it's the name of the process to prepare soap. We call them the saponification. Okay. How do you produce soap? Uh, actually, soap is uh, your ester. Okay, so you're going to actually use your palm oil plus your potassium hydroxide. Okay, then you actually form some uh, from the soap here. So, what is the homologous series for palm oil? Okay, so palm oil is actually ester, not the soap ester, sorry. So, palm oil is ester, it plus the alkaline. Okay, but because ester is insoluble in water, ma, but you want your soap to be soluble. So usually we will take palm oil, which is your ester, then plus this potassium hydroxide, you make your palm oil uh, into a soluble salt. We call this the soap. Okay, so the homologous series of palm oil, which is, it should be ester, because inside got the COO. You all remember that you, for how do you form oil in bio? Uh, since you're all bio, very good. Ma. Uh, three fatty acid plus one glycerol. So fatty acid is carboxylic acid, glycerol is actually alcohol. So carboxylic acid plus glycerol is actually esterification. Ah, is it? <laughs> Although why bio got bio in chemistry? <laughs> it's just relatable. As I say, guys, science subjects are all relatable. Ah, uh, you cannot say one uh, PDSD from bio. <laughs> you have to know all. Okay, state the substance X. Okay, X is. Actually, when you do palm oil plus potassium hydroxide, you may can produce salt already. I mean, I may produce soap. But what is X? X is actually something that you guys always forget. Ah, because guys, when you produce soap, soap is a soluble salt. Since it's a soluble salt, means when you produce soap, it will be in liquid form. But if your teacher wants your soap to be in solid form, what should I do? How do I collect a soap? that is dissolved in water. Ah, so we added X because X is something that is actually easily soluble to make your support, to make your soap actually insoluble. Because soap uh, is still having the palm oil uh, uh, structure inside, right? So palm oil is having a very long carbon chain. So by having a long carbon chain, uh, it will be a quite, it will be quite uh, we call it the less soluble, even though it's soluble, but it's less soluble. So this X here is something that is very soluble so that it can replace off the palm oil in the water. So I mentioned this last time. Yeah, imagine your water, this, this beaker of water, he has a limited amount of water, for example, like 100 uh, H2O molecules. He can only dissolve 100 particles. So what we do is we add something that is very soluble so that he will dissolve with the water, making the water not free. Uh, so the water be like, hey, I dissolve the guy that is easier to dissolve. Uh, you don't, I don't dissolve you already. So he will, he will be like, oh, let me dissolve this uh, substance X instead of the soap. So the soap never get dissolved. Uh, he turned into a solid. So what is X? So, so what is a salt that can be easily dissolved in water? Yes, correct. Sodium chloride. <laughs> hey, good tembak. You see, I explained, then you can tembak already. Hi, ah. So, who's the smart one? I am. Hey, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, see, I got you through. I get you to the correct answer, ma. So, what is the function of X? So, as I said just now, is to actually reduce the solubility of your soap. Okay. So, the answer: reduce the solubility of soap in water, or to precipitate soap out. Okay, and lastly, state the materials that can replace potassium hydroxide and palm oil. Ah, so if you don't want to use potassium hydroxide, you must use some chemical, uh, some alkaline. So instead of potassium hydroxide, what is the other alkaline that we have? Sodium hydroxide. Ah, so, and then you can replace your palm oil with other oil, vegetable oil, any, any other oil, coconut oil, corn oil, and stuff. Okay, moving on, there are this diagram here. Okay, in which container? Container A, container B. 
clothes with grease stain, okay, MG2 plus. MG2 plus means what? Means the solution got, I uh, means your water is hot water. Ah, so in which container soap remove grease stain easily? So if you want to remove grease stain easily, you actually prefer Baker B because don't have MG2 plus, don't have hot water, soap can work here, detergent can work here. Soap can't work in A. So explain your answer. So we say prefer container B because container A has hot water that contains magnesium ions. B is soft water, we do not have any, any ions. So soap will form scum in hot water, but soap do not form scum in soft water. Okay, so it should be a very straightforward answer here. And lastly, suggest one cleaning agent can be remove grease stain in both container. So guys, what is the cleaning agent that can work in both hot and soft water? Definitely detergent. Okay, guys. <laughs> I feel like you're all dying. I also dying. <laughs> Okay, die together. No, 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 no. After this, I can rest. After this, you all cannot rest. <laughs> Crying in smile. Hey. Oh, so enjoy. Uh. Wow, chemistry is so easy for you. Uh. Hi, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. I, I understand there are a lot of, some questions that I did not actually complete. So I'll post the answer into the Google Classroom and maybe after dinner, you guys can actually continue the exercise and also make sure you finish off the rest of the confidential ultimate blur blur book. Ah, okay, can ah? So, okay, one day Jahan teacher is finished. Ah, okay, can, can, can. <laughs> so guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the day with me. Okay, uh, I did my best. I hope you guys put your best also in the tomorrow exam. Don't, don't, don't be shy, okay? Any question, feel free to WhatsApp me. I can still actually answer you. Okay, I'll try my best, okay? Can I? So guys, please let me know when your results are out. Okay, I want to feel proud about me. <laughs> thank you for the three years of teaching. Yes, thank you for staying through the three years. That's also very, very happy. Okay, if I go uni, still can ask. Uh, can, but I cannot answer you idea. <laughs> I forgot any more how to answer you. Hi. Uh... Okay, so guys, uh, all the best, okay? I never I never say good luck one uh, because people like us don't depend on luck. We put effort. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. Lah. Okay, okay. So guys, okay, so guys, I hope you guys get A plus, okay? Any question, please ask, okay? If you have any question in getting into university, into course in future, you can also ask me. I can try to help you in that, okay? On about scholarship and stuff. Okay, okay, nah? uh, so guys, Thank you for staying through the whole day. Thank you for following the whole day. I believe you guys are very tired already. Rest a while after dinner. Please continue your revision. Okay. After SPM, I come apply work in PC. Sure. Uh, funniest teacher. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I see the replay on YouTube? I believe so. Okay. This is the first time I'm doing it on YouTube. Maybe I'm just going to keep it. Okay. Can. So guys. Uh, but then this 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 stream is three hours more. No one gonna watch it lah. <laughs> so guys, all the best. I'll see you all in future. Ah okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye 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 bye. Thank you thank you. Esmond gonna watch it. I know right. <laughs>